Welcome to Journeys the Talk Show. Our show is now live and is hosted in Barbados by Sean Hall, co-hosted by Leroy Trotman, who is coming to you live from Toronto, Canada. And I'm Brett Callahan coming to you live from Barbados. It is now 7 p.m. on Thursday, May 26, 2022. Our show is sponsored by the Barbados Turf Club, Horse Racing at the Garrison Savannah, and the Barbados Tourism Market and Inc., who invites all of our listeners to come and visit Barbados. We've got a busy show, guys, so let's get to it. Here's our host, Sean Hall and Leroy Trotman. What's going on, guys? Good night. Good night, Hi, guys. guys. Good night. Hi, Hi guys. Hi, guys. How's it going, Brian? I'm good, man. We're just having a little technical difficulties here, getting our featured host. Well, getting um, our special guest tonight on board. But he's Sean's working on him. Yes. Sean, Brett, would you like some more yeah, time to put back. you backstage? Yes, yes, thank you. Put me backstage. Okay, great. Leroy, man, how's it going? It's me and you, buddy. Well, it's pretty good. Pretty good up here in the beautiful weather with some rain on its way coming we were going to have rain? a first okay we were going to have a first um turf training tomorrow and we already can't this cancel already oh wow you know and it's pretty lushly green out there as we're looking at that turf course you you know you're familiar with it oh you know? I love unfortunately that our, gra our grass racing is coming up soon too you know it's starting on the fourth and unfortunately the rain is ready to come and stop us already and we're so looking forward to our grass race you know but yeah, you yeah. know how this goes. It's a long year and just the beginning. How's it going with you? Let all of our members, all of our listeners know we're going to do our BTMI weekly racing port report a little later on in the show. But was that correct? We had three Beijing jockeys win today? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, we did. We did. And we're I'm not doing well. Let's, huh? not, let's not forget the veteran, Mr. Husband. He had one ride and one win. You know, one right or one yeah, win. With a, with a good 20, 24% win average right now. So he's right. clicking at the right average. So let's hope the things keep rolling that way. We're not, you know, picking up a lot of months right now because things are a little on the slower end, but we're still. The win percentage I mean, is still good, though, right? We have the best percentage on the on, on the, the top 10 riders, right? So Excellent. let's let's remember good that. And, and the other guys are falling in the, in on doing, into his footsteps and doing the right things up here. So how's your day been going so far? Busy, man. A um, little overcast. I don't know if you've heard of it. The Sahara dust is blowing across the island, so it kind of looks like it's cloudy and a lot of haze, but it's we're not seeing the sun as much as we used to. We're missing our blue skies for the last week or so, but hopefully that blows over soon. I think it was on BBC World News about it's like a massive plume of smoke but it's actually the Sahara dust just okay. coming straight across the Atlantic Ocean and covering us up too. So we're not getting that dust like similar to what we got on the volcano, are we? Not the volcano no. stuff. Thank God for that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, just a light, but a light. I want to talk on behalf of Sean Leroy Hammer, our graphic designer and video guy, and all the team at Journeys. We want to thank Emma Jane Wilson for being our special guest on our Last yes. episode, number six, on May 19th. Was it that awesome, having Emma it was, on? Was it ever? Was it ever? <laughs> very well spoken. Everything went great, too. It was very nice. i seen, not trying to cut you off, but Sean just sent up a message asking if you've seen um, our guest there yet. Not as yet. Not um, as yet. He's not on board. Okay. Well, let's hope but, we um, can get that problem resolved soon. So, yes, and back to your, your... I thought it was an extraordinary conversation with Emma during our last episode. And as we discussed in that episode, we've already started discussions with the Barbados Turf Club and the Barbados Tourism Market in Inc. We're okay. actually putting things together in hopes of inviting both Emma Jane Wilson and Chantel Sutherland to our international jockeys champion of champions kings versus queens at the garrison savannah 
wow. it's something we wow. got in the works and getting some ideas from these lady jockeys and wow. we were thinking if we could get a champion of champion champ champion of champions kings versus queens <laughs> men racing against women at the garrison savannah in the wow. future we are kind of looking we want to ask when the girls going to be convenient for them but we're thinking maybe in december or january or early february maybe who knows near the gold cup time as well well hey anything is possible right yeah anything is possible well something to look forward to and i mean you know we can get <clears throat> some fans um shipping down there also to visit you know at the same time It'd be great for our tourism and everything would be and btma would be really grateful to that and is anybody yeah, man, that we can involve into that too man we're trying to get them all involved and um, i spoke to rosette pierce the ceo of the barbados turf club and she well, said if you get that letter from the tourism authority um btmi that they're cover the accommodation and plane tickets it's 95 percent there in action if you get it to work so okay read your your texts there so sean is sending some stuff yeah. out there and he's asking some questions so make Good. sure we keep attention well while we're doing that let's get jennifer morrison onto our show she okay. came up with a great pick last week in our journeys pick of the week yes. Yes. Welcome, Jennifer. How are you today? Hey, hi guys. How you doing? Okay. <laughs> well, it's Jennifer, you slammed them last week. Let's see what you can do for us this week. Our fans are there waiting for the next pick. You put some Gosh. money in your pocket. Let's see if we can put some more. You want me to go two for two? To you? Yeah, no, it's oh, fun. Yes, I of had course, the man. Exactly in the in the preakness early voting on to um epicenter, pay twenty five eighty. Yeah. So that was pretty good. And I actually played it for a couple more than two dollars. So that was really good. But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna give another pick this week and then I'll touch on a, a race on Sunday. But I really like a horse on Saturday, you guys. Okay. I know it's not a big field, but she's five to one in the morning line. It's race seven on Saturday. The horse is number five, loaded question. Now I sent um Brett is gonna show a little replay here of her first start of the year. She was the number two horse. She's in the yellow silks of owner Frank DiGiulio. And her race was just a big mess from start to finish. I'll talk about it briefly after Brett shows the race. Watch the two horse in this race. And they're ready and they're off. Pretty good start out wide, Diamond Crush. Henry's Gamble began sharply and coming for the lead, Alpha Mia. And racing up towards the inside, Polar Appeal and Practical Gizmo. And they got away now from Henry's Gamble back to mid-pack. And over on the inside, Gormley Girl is striding forward. In behind them, Jolene. Jolene all paid up, loaded question. And last of all is Kerrick's Beauty. Out in front, it's Diamond Crush, about a length and three quarters to two to Polar Appeal. And racing up on the outside, Alpha Mia, one to Gormley Girl. And back in the center, Practical Gizmo, caught wide Henry's Gamble, trying to get involved now. All paid up, starting to circle the field, although it took a bit of a dip back as they came into the turn. Jolene, Jolene, the center, load a question on the inside. Kerrick's Beauty will have to come from absolute last. Out in front, Diamond Crush, a length polar appeal. Racing third, Alpha Mia. Henry's Gambles working over time under the whip, but running on. Practical Gizmos there. Kerrick's Beauty is coming from absolute last down the outside. Diamond Crush is out by two and a half. Henry's Gamble trying to make inroads, and down the outside comes Emma Jane Wilson on Kerrick's Beauty. But it's Diamond Crush about a length and three quarters to Henry's Gamble. Kerrick's Beauty and Diamond Crush keeps on going. Diamond Crush coming to the wire. Diamond crush by a length and a quarter Kerrick's beauty from in the center Henry's gamble and then practical gizmo at Alpha Mia 111 so I know yeah so I know you're busy there Brett trying to get your guests hooked up but um Leroy I don't know if you're watching first I'm of all watching. Question. Yeah. yeah she had a you know terrible start she got slammed whatever okay so now she's riding the rail yeah. you know the first uh, eight to ten days of the season you didn't want to be on the rail it was no. just, it was treacherous so anyway, I know what Dice K Fukumoto's trying to do. He's just saying, you know, he's, he's probably got no chance from way back there. The horse likes to run to the lead. And then the rail never opens up all the way down the lane. Yeah. So when he got squeezed really twice like there. Her. Yeah, she's adding blinkers for this race on Saturday. Um, same spot. Kevin Nichols is going to ride. And uh, it's a smaller field. I hope we get five to one. That's all I'm saying. 
but I really like loaded question number five in the seventh race on Saturday. And then I thought, yeah, boys, reopen my betting account at HPI. <laughs> I say open, open everybody's betting account. No, <laughs> um, I just want to touch a little bit on the feature race. We have one stake this weekend, and that's Sunday, the Grade Two uh, Stella Artois Eclipse Stakes. Yeah. It's one hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars, guys, and it's wow. the first time we get to see Mighty Heart back at Woodbine this year. Two-time mm -hmm. Horse of the Year. And uh, yeah, he's uh, back. And from all, from all reports, uh, from my uh, friends that uh, you know own the horse and stuff, he is absolutely almost unmanageable right now. He needs to run now. He had that one poor race at Keeneland, and I know Josie Carroll was sort of second guessing herself about running him there, whether he was fit enough. He was pretty eager. Showed a lot of speed that day and then sort of faded. So he's back on Lasix. He's got Patrick Husbands back on board, Leroy. And yep. it's a six-horse field. You know, he's going to go to the lead. I think Frosted Over, the two horse, is the horse to beat. Who's going to track him all the way. But it'll be fun to see Mighty Heart back at Woodbine. And uh, he's got a big chance. And I must include those last two works that he worked. Patrick did work in one of those works, which was the one on May 15th. And he worked pretty damn good he galloped in 12 and changed that day nice. 26 and changed that for seven eights and patrick was pretty excited the way he worked for him that morning so i must include that into that and then tyler came back and worked him again this weekend and tyler was pretty happy the way he worked too so i must say that That's i think great. we're on the right track there jen well that would be uh, great i'd love to see him win in his return yes and talk about mighty heart we want to mention your book that was just could you just yeah i'll just show it again of course you know Plug, plug. Excellent. <laughs> I'm actually um, selling them on um, the Woodbine backstretch on Saturday morning between 9 and 12. But yes, uh, incredibly enough, it's now in the semi finalists for the Dr. Tony Ryan Award, Yippee. which is um, a I'm really prestigious you, award. In round you. Thank you. And um, the winner gets 10 grand US. Now, I don't expect to win, but I'm in the top mm. six. Come on, come on, Jen. Get, come on. Don't, don't, don't <laughs> take those words. Come on. Have a little confidence in yourself there. Get that have out of there. Confidence. Yeah, get that <laughs> unexpected feeling out of here. Let's well, be more positive. It's very thrilling, though, because uh, I'm in a nice little race there with five other books that are, you know, I've already been searching them. There's like a fiction book, there's a kid's book. There's an interviews book. Anyway, it's very fun. I'm thrilled. In a couple of weeks, we'll find out who makes the top three. And uh, that would be a thrill. But anyways, I'm already thrilled and very proud that my little book uh, is sort of muttering along here. Well, we'll be cheering for you. Thanks. Thanks, guys. <laughs> I really appreciate you guys having me on. I hope Loaded Question wins on Saturday and Mighty Heart Sunday. And I'm looking forward to a great show you guys got. I know all the special guests and stuff going on there. So um, I can't wait to watch. Okay. Thank Man, you again. It's been busy, That's but nice. thanks so much, Jennifer. Pleasure having you it. again. Okay. Bye. Really appreciate it. Take care. <laughs> All right, Brent. What's going on back Loaded. I told you, man, I'm, I'm going to reopen my HPPI account, man. <laughs> Make some money. We got the bar. It's the Jennifer's club. Jennifer's got to load me up. Yeah, there Everyone you go. Everyone else should do the same. <laughs> <laughs> Are we making yeah, that? We're just having a few issues with our guests, one of our guests. It's always a technology issue. And Sean, our host, is taking the step to actually assist him. So, Thank you, Sean, for all your help. Um, but, ooh, do you know what else exciting has happened this week, Leroy? <laughs> I guess you're going to share it with you me. You don't Come know? Let's, let's have it. Let's have it. Well, we've described that we have the Barbados Turf Club as one of our primary sponsors. Yeah. And the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc., who've graciously supported the Sean Hall Journeys, the talk show. Um. And we really look forward now to introducing Marianne, Marianne Ortepi to our show. Hello. Who's Hi guys. here on behalf Hello. of our newest sponsor, mpequine.com. McKee Pownell Equine Services from up in Schaumburg. I got That's that right. right, didn't I, Marianne? Yes, you did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well done. Well done. So Marianne and her team, including Mike and everyone else, all the other veterinarians up there, are strongly supporting our show and we 
want to invite Marianne to tell us a bit about more about their business. We read that they offer equine veterinary care, focusing on lameness, sports, horse medicine, pre-purchase exams, dentistry, podiatry, and preventative health care for our heroes, the equine athlete themselves, the thoroughbred horses. Correct. Tell us a little Actually, more, Marianne. Yeah, actually, we do all kinds of horses. Um, Dr. Melissa McKee and Dr. Mike Pownell started uh, McKee Pownell Equine Services in 2002. Uh, the first practice location was in Campbellville. Um, over the years, they expanded to Newmarket and Caledon, adding, you know, veterinarians and support staff in the way of, you know, veterinary technicians and, and so on um, as they grew. Uh, and, and so four years ago, they, they decided to open a rehab and repro facility um, at a farm just north of Nobleton uh, in Schaumburg, Ontario. And uh, so we have uh, a hundred acre farm. We have availability for, you know, 19 stalls we can fill. We have uh, four 15 by 15 sand pens for turnout. We have seven half acre paddocks. Um, we have a 70 by 180 foot arena, which is a lovely arena, which actually we took the old poly track. It, it, it's actually the old poly track from Woodbine is, wow. is in wow. our arena. So it's, it's a really great uh, surface to, to kind of, we do a lot, a lot of hand walking, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of um, lunging, a lot of just starting horses back up after injuries, soft tissue injuries and so on. Um, like you said, we have all those different, you know, acupuncture, uh, veterinary spinal manipulation therapy. Um, you know, we, we, we have four, four veterinarians that work out of that particular practice, but we do have two other locations, one in Campbellville and, and, and one in uh, Uxbridge. In Campbellville, we have a standing MRI machine that we use. Um, so yeah, we do. That's Dr. Kate Robinson that you're seeing there. She's um, the, the head of the, uh, the farm. She, we, yeah. we have, we do have the four vets that work out of there, but they, and they all pitch in to do rounds every day. So, you know, all the patients are, are being seen by a veterinarian every day. And, uh, you know, I, I, That's I think great it's, care. yeah, actually, you know, it's wonderful. We have a, we have a body worker, um, named, uh, Marnie Raymond. She does laser pimp beamer massage equitaping. We, she, she is one of the most unbelievable uh you know people that i've been around i've been around some really good horse people and she's just very connected with these horses and uh you know she 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 does that on the farm as well as doing farm calls outside you know off right. of our our property um so you know we take it we, we 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 don't have the pools and we don't have this and that but we take a very simplistic approach um i have some really great uh staff that are you know, highly skilled have, have been working with, with race horses, but, you know, we also have a lot of show horses, a lot of, a lot of backyard horses. We, we, we don't turn anybody away really, you know, if we can right. help them out after, after doing, you know, if they have colic surgery or, you know, any kind of thing that, that, that isn't easily handled by the farm that they're going back to, we kind of give them that, um, that the place to, Right. With, to do that in a, in a, in a quiet, controlled environment. I mean, it's a really peaceful uh, environment. We have a lovely setting that we are able to take these horses, even, you know, if they're well behaved enough, we take them outside and we walk them outside and they, they get sunshine on their back. They're not stuck in a stall. You know, we try right. and we try and make it as much like home as possible, um, but still giving it, you know, the controlled environment that, that, they need you know so but and and we also we have a, an ophthalmologist that comes in and books um you know uh appointments once a week we'll have a a day of like six seven ship-ins that come in and 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 then the eye care after that uh we can handle sometimes it's you know treating a horse's eyes seven set with seven different medications five minutes apart two wow. hours you know every two hours so at home at a, at a home farm it's difficult to handle that but we have the staff and the skill to be able to to manage those kind of treatments and and to, to to do it well you know we have a vet doing rounds every day looking at the horses on the farm and uh you know so we have that kind of added edge that we have more eyes and more skilled people handling those horses you know we love so our listeners to know that there are many people around the racetrack including jockeys owners grooms hot walkers 
that love our animals, our heroes oh. of the sport. Well, so I, I, it's really I love good to have them aboard. One so much that I traveled all the way to Barbados last week to go and see him. And he was one that I had the pleasure of working with at, uh, at our facility, um, you know, after he had- Tell a, us more about that. Well, of course so, was it? That's right. His name was Corsi. Um, as a two-year-old, he was undefeated. His first two races were uh, spectacular, you know, really impressive, um, trained by Josie Carroll. And, uh, you know, he, he was with, along with Mighty Heart, he was the same year as Mighty Heart, and they were both aiming for the Queen's Plate and training really well. And um, unfortunately, he sustained a uh, an injury from a, a, a loose horse on the track that ended up running into him. And he, he sustained an injury that they thought would be, you know, career ending. Um, his owners really believed in him and uh, sent him to us. Um, one of his owners is a good friend of mine. I used to work yearling sales for him when I was like 16, 17, when I first, you know, moved up here from, from the States. And, um, and so, you know, he came up to us and he was a handful. He was a, he was a tough little three-year-old colt and, but he was a special horse and, and he really kind of caught my heart a little bit. And uh, we worked with him, got him back under saddle, got him, you know, back into training and, and kind of, we did as much as we could do with him and, and then suggested he go elsewhere to continue on. Well, and this is where Sean Hall, our host, comes in. Sean. Exactly. Yes, yes, yes. And I'm so happy that you come with us today, Marianne. And well, we did an interview. We did yeah. a we did a we did a video shot. Let's, let's we did well, a thing. before we get yeah. to that, Sean, I want to find out some more about this horse and Marianne and you and how we connected the horse together. Tell us that story okay. before we show okay. the video. Well, let me tell you something. This Marianne been calling me about this horse for such a long time. I mean, and at first I was telling her, Marianne, I, I don't think Barbados have that sort of money just to bring a horse that's just going to be a stallion. You know what I mean? We, we can't, you know, we're not that money. We don't have that money down here playing around. <laughs> and she kept calling. She kept calling, you know what I mean? When he got was persistent, injured, yeah? She was very she was persistent. persistent. She she told me, all right. I'm a little like that. Well, I mean, no, no, no. Your love of the animal, the love of the animals, the love of the animal. That's what it takes. Yeah, yeah but yeah. she then told me that he was in training. And then next thing you know, he was racing, you know. And then I was watching him run. And, you know, his first start was very nice. You, you, you led all the way and then you got caught late. And then his second start, you know, I said, I said, you know, I got to watch him one more time, you know, because. <laughs> I, you know, I just second can't. Time around, second time around. Yeah, you can I was be him. after the second time around. He, he didn't run very good at all. And then, you know, um, Glenn told me to make an offer, made an offer, and tell me you could pick him up tomorrow. <laughs> it was that easy. And um, right. so, you know, I, I promised him, and I promised Marianne, I promised everybody I'd do my best with this horse and I'll make sure that I would. Cause, you know, I do the laser treatment myself. I'm, I, I'm the laser guy here in Barbados. So I, I, I treat him every day. I train him in the sea. I do everything possible for this horse to make sure he stays sound. We saw and, him on Sunday at the, at the beach, didn't we, yes. Sean? Well, yes. and yes. That, was, that was the main thing that I thought. Because, you know, we did laser on him. We did acupuncture. Yes. We did all kinds of things. And it helped, right? So yes. Yes. when we suggested that he go down and swim, that yes. really helped him. And, it, yes. and I think without that, I don't think he would have made it. Correct. So when, you know, when he, when he ended up having these two races, that, that he just wasn't running to the level that, yes. that his owners wanted him to run to. I kind of thought, you know what? He's still, he's sound. Like he's yes. sound. He's happy. Yes. He loves what he does. Yes. But he needed a place where he wasn't, you know, hammering yes. himself every day right. on the track. And what a perfect place at Barbados to go and swim. And, and, and you know, I knew he could swim because he was doing that to, to, yes. to rehab. So, yeah. But Sean, I, how I, many horses get the pleasure of coming mm -hmm. to the Caribbean Sea and swim yeah. every day in the ocean. I mean, and then that having, horse some, is and then having some person a vet to follow him down there too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm not a vet. I'm not well, a vet. Hey, well, I'm not a vet. Well, okay. Hang on, Greg, Greg long enough to know what's going on though. Okay, yes. <laughs> and you're dying. Yeah. So you wanna you want us to, to give us a little taste of that Check video this there, Greg? Video. Yeah. Absolutely. Enjoy. <laughs>
Hi, this is Sean Hall from Journeys here with Marianne DeGans. This is the lady who really got this horse for sea to the island. She's been yes. telling me about this horse for so, <laughs> so long. I know, what, three years? Three so years now. So long, you yeah. were telling me about this horse yeah. until you got me to get my clients to buy him. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about this horse, please. Well, Corsi was a, a really impressive two-year-old. He won his first two starts very impressively, um, trained by Josie Carroll up at Woodbine. Uh, he then took the winter, went down to Florida, trained, came back up and had an unfortunate accident on the track uh, where another loose horse had run into him and he, he had a shoulder injury that, that, that you know looked like it was going to be career-ending. Uh, how I had met him was... He came up to, uh, I work for a company called McKee Pownell Equine Services, which is a group of veterinarians. And we have a rehab farm just north of Woodbine, north of Toronto. And uh, he came up to us for some rehab and, and to see if we could get that shoulder back in order. And, um, you know, we worked with him for a number of months, got him back under saddle and, and got him training lightly. And then really uh, the best thing for him was to go down and swim so we suggested to the owners that he be sent down to Kesmark in Kentucky which is a wonderful rehab facility mm -hmm. um, and he he ended up going down there and really thriving doing really well with the swimming the the lack of concussion really helped him build that that shoulder and you know he came back to Woodbine and he started twice and he just couldn't run to the level that 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 he ran before and uh, you know he was a he was one of the main contenders for the Queen's Plate in his three-year-old year. He was yes. doing so well. Yes. And uh, so, you know, the owners wanted to do right by him and didn't want to carry on, you know, drilling him up there. And, you know, working on the track all the time isn't all that good. Right. Yeah. And so I thought that it would be perfect for him to come down here to you when I see all these beautiful horses swimming. And, and that's how you train them down here, you know. And it, 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 it obviously he looks amazing. And uh, he's done well. And... We uh, we decided to travel all the way down here to see him. I've never gone this far to see a horse, but he's a special boy. He's a special boy. That's great, man. So yeah. um, I'm so happy that you, know, you could go back now with some yeah. good reports. Absolutely. He's, no, he is he's thriving. Doing well. He's driving well. Yeah. He's doing everything. No, he looks. He wants to be a crib right now. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I just gave him an apple. Now he wants to crib. It's my bad influence. Yeah, so nonsense, I mean, but. so I, you know, it's very important. That yeah. you are here to see yeah. this, and I really, I, I'm, I'm so pleased. I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm, I'm appreciative to you because I knew, you know, sending him down here. He's the kind of horse that loves an adventure. He loves seeing new things, mm. and and you know, I hope that uh, eventually. I, I, unfortunately, he wasn't able to run this weekend because mm. they canceled racing, and it's going to be next weekend. Yes. But I hope that he has a successful career, and then hopefully yes. he can go on to to breed some yes, mares and and. He's, he's very well bred yes. and, and you know I, I thought that it would be a good idea to bring his blood down to the islands and he's just such a good looking individual and yes. very talented. Well, so. Marianne, Hi all, I, all I could tell you man is thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you very much for sending, I mean he's a magnificent looking horse. Yeah, he, he fits very well in our circle of horses Absolutely. down here because of his nice strong size and everything yeah. when it's finished in order to be a stallion. Yeah. And I really appreciate that. And all I can say now is, yeah, this is Journeys, and we are out. <laughs> <laughs>
That's so right. meet the veterinarians, who they are and what they do. We thank yeah. you, Marianne, for thank supporting you. Journeys to Talk Show. On behalf of Sean, Leroy, Hammer, and the whole team, we really look forward to working with you and yeah. the team at All right. MPE Equine. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. So thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Hey, Sean. Well, guys, right. let's get this show on the road. To get get a new supporter and and they're doing such wonderful things for our equine athletes so that's right big up to them thank you so much for your sponsorship but guess who we have now listeners the star of the show yes champion jamaican and canadian jockey george hosang welcome george to our show thank you brett i like that intro <laughs> we try, we try. <laughs> How, are How are you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I appreciate what you guys are doing, and I know I'm old, and but I'm not. No, 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 you never. No, 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 no. Like you. no, no, no. Don't use that old word in there at all. <laughs> <laughs> You're still all a young, young, still been a young a long <laughs> It's been uh, twenty year, twenty or some years. Since since I stopped riding, yes. So. <laughs> but you're still in, you're still in the game, though. You're still in the game because they're naming races after you and stuff like that. So you're oh still in yes, the game. yes, yeah. yeah Where is that? Spot. They're naming a race, Leroy. Let me just turn up the volume a little here. No, I, I, in uh, Kamana Park. Kamana Park. 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 They have the George yeah. Sand Trophy runs yeah. Yeah. Uh, the end of January each yes. year. Yes, um, and you've so, been down for one of those before too, yeah. right? Well, you know what? I was going just this year, but uh, I mean, the last running of it and the COVID thing took over for two years. Wow. And uh, you I get a to chance miss. to go down. Uh, but I, I intend to do it uh, next uh, in next January. Okay. So I, I feel very proud of it that at least very the race good. has been yeah. damn yes. forgotten. Well, you've made a name for yourself in this game that you know that we all love so much so hey why not and you are one of the best writers that come out from down there too you know jamaica produce a lot of great writers and you're one of the best or probably the best Thanks, you know man. a lot of guys a lot of guys would say that you know what i mean but before um guys you get we get into your your journey george we lost a real great friend all of us but the one he was very close to you became very personal to you which is chris hammond and I know you sent out your condolences and all that already, but I want to hear a little bit more about that friendship that you created with him before we get into your journey, because we can't leave out good guys like that, and especially when he's so close yes, to you. Yes, yes, yes. Well, yeah, tell you what, Chris was a man with so much racing knowledge mm -hmm. from from all over the world. Correct. And how I got really close to, to Chris was when I was riding full-time in Florida, on the big occasions in Jamaica, like the Derby Days and the Super Stakes, he would invite me down and he would book mounts for me. Oh, like and, that. Um, Where to go? Close. And they were like, he booked all winners for me. Mm -hmm. But I messed up on a few. And, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, but they're, they're, he's, a, he's a great horseman. I mean, he introduced the claiming system in Jamaica and the um, of online betting mm -hmm. and things like that that improved. He, he, he was a futuristic guy, you know, he, he was a visionary guy. That's right. So he, he brought the, the future to Jamaica. And um, I think that what he did should be appreciated for generations to come. <clears throat> That's, I mean, it's uh, a sad loss. And not only that, he's a, he's a big, jolly guy, funny guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when you're around Chris, he was always laughing and joking. You, you can't help but have a good time when he's around. Well, when you have a but, guy like that around, you, you can only, and I mean, his father, his, his, um, his grandfather and all that was associated with racing also too, right? Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. As a matter of fact, you know what? He introduced me one, I think it was, the uh hall of fame that he introduced me to it was intro the introduction of me at the time when i was receiving i think it's the hall of fame in jamaica oh so he was and, introduction um, to you. the way he introduced me was like 
you know, I had to get up and say, Chris, you know, I would love to stay here all night and listen to you <laughs> talk about me. <laughs> I mean, it, it made me feel like 10 feet tall, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that, I mean, that, that has to be something big because a guy like you, you your career has been so rich that you should be yes. accustomed to hearing good things. So, I mean, for him to do that to you, man, and it, it just Boy, proves though that it, even though I tell though, you, he big me up that night. Yeah, Boy, even though your career is over and you, you know, it's still good to hear those good things, man. Yes, yes, so I good. appreciated that a lot. Was he one of the guys that got that nice horse, Vice Roy? Get got you on that horse? Yes, he was the one that got me on that horse. That that big historic race between the Vice Roy and Milligram, which was the Triple Crown winner in Jamaica at that point. Mm -hmm. And you know the backlight. They don't have to tell you what happened. Oh, yeah, that yeah. but uh, yeah, but he was it's that, that, that connection. You you guys just had that great connection, and he does some great things for you, eh? Yes, yes. Well, that's uh, really. George. We got a little video to show you, George. Check out. Yes. Hands and heels, man. Were, were you guys watching that? Yes, oh, yes, yeah, yes, watching yes. That, yes. <laughs> you know, ironically, that that milligram, that horse was owned by a very, very good friend of mine, milligram, and he was gonna get five million Jamaican dollars bonus to win wow. that race. Wow! wow. And you and took that away, eh? Well, the guy's not my friend anymore. But, uh, <laughs> I, and at that time, uh, the Jamaican dollar was a much stronger than today. So it was yes. kind of nice chunk of change. Yes. Wow. <laughs> He's also wow. the one. But George, well, what George you. just before the wire look back and look at the horse. <laughs> no, but what one asked George? George. By yeah. the time when you won that race, that was in 1991, I think it was. Yes. You were, yes. Yeah, but you were you were champion many times over already in Jamaica and in Canada. In Canada. How, yes. How did that? What did that mean, winning that race mean to you at the time? I mean, because the super stakes is a big thing in Jamaica. Yes, it was. It was. Let me tell you something. Uh, the, the, at that time, the, the purse money was a million dollars. The first right. million dollar race in Jamaica, right. which was wow. quite a bit of money at the time, yes. but only because Chris was at the wheels, you know, uh -huh. uh, he, he promoted so many things and the purse money was get, getting, you know, like doubled every year. 
yes. under Chris Armand's management. So that's what he did so great for racing in Jamaica. And that was attracting owners that are, you know, people with with, with cash flow yes, to yes. invest in horses because the purse money could pay them back. Yes, which so, is important. So it was a solid investment for them. And they were they were coming and then something happened and the, the racing kind of I think went backwards a bit. Uh, after the seventh uh, like uh yeah after the seventies I think came on a spark, suffered some setbacks and the purses went stagnant and the Jamaican dollar devalued and here we go again in an economic mess. Yeah. Well, before we jump too far ahead, um, George, you know, a lot of people that don't know you and hear about you, because I know there's a few guys that when I was talking that you were going on a show at the track, because I'm, I'm in at Woodbine. I'm, I'm, a, I'm an agent at Woodbine. So I'm working at Woodbine presently. Why those guys are in Barbados? I'm up here. And I was- Leroy, yes. Leroy, yes. tell George the truth. You're telling that you're the agent for or, or equivalent to you, George, Patrick husband. I'm Patrick's husband's <laughs> agent. Yeah, yeah, I'm Patrick's husband's yeah. agent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, George. Okay. Okay. I, I, but, I met Patrick uh, a couple of times in Miami way yes. back. And, okay. You know, but I before know we get, yeah, before we jump to that, I want to, I want to go back in there because this is this show is about you, and I want the fans out there that haven't seen you in a while and haven't you know get to know about you and who don't know about you we want to jump a little further back into the 60s because that's where you started and you started with a trainer called um fitz crawford there are people out there that don't know about me well I'm, i was unfortunate there was a guy i want i hope he's watching the show right now because i told him i was gonna pick on him too this guy's name is from trinidad and his name is um emmanuel that's oxley right. and i said you don't know about george who signed me you got something's got to be wrong with you man the great what george who signed you don't know about so that that's what I'm, i want to speak yeah. about this right now so he can hear that i'm talking about him so the he's living under a rock. yeah yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> i'm telling you george so so for, for, for a guy like him, that guy, I want you to familiarize him with who you are, how great a writer you are. I were, sorry, but I'm still saying you're, you're still at that level of a writer. So let's yeah. go back to the 60s where you were with yeah. trainer, started with Fitz uh, Crawford. So, Well, you know me, I'm not the one to boast about myself, all right? Let, you're I'll great. Be... You're great. So give yeah. yourself a little pat on your shoulder. You didn't get where you are for nothing, all right? Yeah. There all you right. go. <laughs> uh, yeah, I started... Back with Fritz Crawford in um, as a, an apprentice, learning yeah. to ride with Fritz Crawford, who used to train horses from my uncles. Okay, that's how I got started in the game. Okay. I have an uncle Victor Lisu and Basil Lisu that that owned horses and raced horses. Right. So Fritz Crawford took me under his wings. I would say this is like the mid sixties. Mm -hmm. So like what? That's a hundred years ago. Uh, <laughs> I'm a child from the mid '60s, so don't don't go there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, it took me uh, a few years under his tutelage to start race riding. Mm -hmm. But um, at that stage, where we 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 didn't get a lot of practice because we had once a week racing okay horses were, were, were not we he didn't have a large stable he had i think 12 horses and i was just like getting on one horse a day to learn on which was my uncle's horse right so uh when i started riding really i i didn't really know much about race riding because remember now in the 60s we had no cameras we had no videos we only could what our apprentice masters we call them who was fritz crawford would tell us right. we didn't know how we looked on a horse because there's no cameras to tell us so i guess i look like a monkey on a horse <laughs> <laughs> they had to tell me which way to sit on a horse You're going backwards sitting forward <laughs> but anyway i when i started riding in 1969 uh i was hardly hardly getting any rides 
and mm-hmm. I got depressed and all that, you know, because I, this is what I really loved at the time, mm-hmm. and I wanted to. It was unheard of that a Chinese would be riding horses at the time, mm-hmm. really. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I'm it not that. Yeah, I'm not like, I, that. They, and they would curse at me and told me to yeah. go back in the shops. You know, yeah. and pick up saltfish. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the Chinese, which, which what uh, most of the Chinese did back then in Jamaica. Yes. We make uh, tender sh- uh, shops, mm-hmm. grocery shops. So that was the teasing that went on. And it took me uh, like two years to win a race through. Uh, by then, I had changed apprentice master to Era Lim, who Sean probably knows of. Yes. Steve Lim. Steve Lim. Steve Lim. Yes. Errol, Errol Lim yeah. and Mike Lim. Mike Lim. Mike, brother, Mike. Yeah, yeah, they were very instrumental in my upbringing as an mm-hmm. apprentice in Jamaica. And when yeah. we went, I went to Canada too. They were, they backed me all the way. Laurie yeah. Sylvia and Sean, you know all. You know, Lord, that was my master. <laughs> but this, I have to tell you, this true story, word for word. When I was getting depressed and couldn't. Uh, winner race. I um, my uncle, who owned, an uh, a, a syndicate by the name of the Fugitives, which is my uncle and his friends. They actually owned a horse named Creation that won the Jamaica Derby, mm-hmm. and now he's a big horse, right? Yeah. And mm-hmm. uh, he, my uncle, went to Laurie Silver, who was training Creation. I begged him to put me on the horse. Right. And Laurie Silvera said to my uncle, this is not a ride for an apprentice. Yes. And he knows that I, you know, I didn't know really what I was doing yet. I didn't yes. have the strength and the experience yet. Yes. But uh, my uncle pressed on and Laurie Silvera said, you know, I make my living from co- my commission. <laughs> so he, my uncle said, well, if George blows the race, I will give you your commission from my mm-hmm. pocket. That's how wow. my uncle was backing me because right. he's the one that got Good me support. to race. Right? support. Right. Yes. So this is what happened. Creation. I was on him, named on him in a race. I was like the whole in one to five favorite, something like that, and finish up the track. Wow. Because Larry Silvera was saying. This is not a ride for an apprentice. Yes. He needs man handling or yes. a strong rider. Yes. So my uncle, after the race, gave him the check for his commission. And you yes. know what Laura Silvera did? He tore up the check. Yes. Wow. I said, I wow. know what you are trying to do for your yes. family. Yes. But I will put him on the right horse when the time comes. Yes. And I tell you, Mr. Silvera, he's a gentleman. Yes. He's a man God of his word, God true, God genuine God. man. Yes. Uh, like a month, a couple months down the road, when I was getting a little more experience, mm-hmm. he put me on a horse and it was like, he just yeah. said, Jack, just don't fall off. <laughs> <laughs> and I, the horse name was Helen of Troy. Uh-huh. And she just blew them away, and the winners just kept coming from Mr. Silvera. And also, his brother picked me up, Michael Silvera, who Silvera. you know, too, yes, yes, and, yes. And at the time, his dad, Owen Silvera, yes. his trainer, too. So Ooh. I was riding for the whole family. Yeah, and they were limb, and you know, I was riding good horses then. So I became the, the leading rider. Uh, on the third year, I start riding. Can I ask you this question before we go any further? Did you ever ride Bonnie Blue Flag in Jamaica? No, I was you a kid it. and I was riding the rails at that time. Bonnie <laughs> 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 Blue Flag was a, was a big horse at that time. And I was, used to go to the racetrack with my uncle, and that's yes. how I got hooked on racing. No, because Mr. Severe, that's the horse, he came to Barbados one time, saw this chestnut filly. He said, Sean, this horse looked like a horse I had in Jamaican name, Bonnie Blue Flag. He said, yeah. I'm going to buy this horse for you. And 
just like what he did for you, he did for me. Because that horse was the she was champion two year old. She beat the a Creole that beat the air class. So you know it's the story you're telling me is the same type of thing that love that came to me at my time, you know what I mean? When I left him in, in Canada to go back home. He set yes. me up. But I was hoping he would tell me, yes, you wrote one new flag. So we the story would be so much better. <laughs> So you became the top apprentice down there, George? Yes, top apprentice, the first yes. full year of riding. And then mm -hmm. I won after that uh, four years in succession, the leading rider. Wow. And you had two, wow. you had two other, two had a competitive riders riding with you. Yes, more than two. We had well, some two, great riders. Two particular, from, two particular guys we're speaking about. Oh, um, we're talking. What uh Richard DePaz was one and there was uh Winston Griffiths and Emilio okay. Rodriguez. Uh, Embo, Embo. Rodriguez, Rodriguez Embo. and Griffith. Yeah, yeah. And but Griffith. there were the Panamanians, Joe Bravo, Albino Ubidia, those guys were great writers too. Yeah. And in the winter time we had Lester Pigott, Joe wow. Mercer, and a host of other uh English writers that came down. So we were we had a pretty busy winter season there in Jamaica. Les the Pigot used to ride in Jamaica with yeah, you every winter. Wow. That's and cool. in reciprocation, no, no, that's coming back history, yeah, Sean. Yeah, I yeah. was I went to, to uh, England to ride on his invite, Joe wow. Mercer and Lester Pigot. Great. Wow. So so tell us about cool. that experience in England. It, oh, it was great. I, I mean, if you don't go to England and see England or France and see turf racing. Yeah. Well, you, you haven't seen turf racing yet. Yeah. I mean, like miles and miles of grass that looks like carpet. Yes. Wow. Right. I right. mean, you don't go and come back after a race and tell a trainer, oh, I got shut up. You have like miles and miles of racing <laughs> <laughs> to work with. If you get shut up, you should be shot. <laughs> So that was a great experience, though, and um, I appreciated that a lot in reciprocation when they spend the winters there. They, it was arranged, I think, by Jack Ashenheim back then, was a was a president of the jockey club in, in Jamaica at the time. Wow. So that was my experience in Europe. Hey, I, I rode two races, yeah. I got two races. To, uh, I rode two races at uh, Newmarket. Okay. Wow. I never rode in a field of 26 horses before, and that was uh -huh. an experience. Wow. <laughs> and a two year old race. Wow. Going a straight wow. mile. A straight wow. mile. Wow. Yeah. I did manage to finish third on another horse that uh, was trained by uh, Lester Pigott's father in law, whose name is Armstrong. Uh, what, I forget his, last, his first name, but he was Armstrong his father-in-law so i mean that was i've written to in venezuela and puerto rico mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. so i was, oh, was traveling there the out there. there did you win races out there too in uh, venezuela yes well that's another good story i can tell you about <laughs> i was invited down there because we had venezuelan riders coming to jamaica uh yeah. to ride on occasions so they, I was invited back down there to ride for Millard Zaidi, who mm -hmm. everybody knows in Venezuela that he was a champion trainer for many years. Right. They race on Saturdays and Sundays, mm -hmm. and Millard Zaidi named me on nine of his horses. Oh. It's eight or nine horses, but I, I'm not sure now that I, after I tell you this story, what happened. The first horse he put me on, this was a two-year-old. Horse was like one to nine or something like that. Was in wow. front, and we hit the turn. The saddle went right over the side, and I fell. And the same horse I was riding stepped in my knee. Wow. So they had to ambulance me off the track, and I wound up in the hospital with a big blown knee. And the nine horses, six of them won. <laughs> and I'm watching the races because they televise it in the hospital everywhere because racing yes. is like the sport yes. in Venezuela, uh -huh. right? And I'm just like 
killing my I, I want to like you know I shoot myself in the head hear what happened in Venezuela the racetrack is so high above sea level uh-huh. that horses have difficult have a difficult time breathing yes I heard that so they don't pull too tight on the girls mm. oh. now nobody tells me this because I don't speak a word of Spanish <laughs> and they don't speak a word of English so nobody told me that the girth is not really as tight it should be yes to have the horse breathe so that's why when i hit the turn sagalus went over to the side yes. you kind of shit that was the story of my <laughs> trip to venezuela <laughs> i could have been like a superstar <laughs> riding six winners and wound up in the hospital so you never went back you never went back no, I I didn't I didn't go back. Um, oh dear. But um, you know I I wish I was invited again. Yes. But it didn't happen because wow. um, I think racing was sort of getting the country was turning then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as we are, we'll I guess you're gonna ask me what happened why I left right. <laughs> So, well, uh, let, yeah. Yeah. let's before we get into that that part yeah. of the story because i mean jamaica has some great races over the times derbies all kind of competitive races um prestige races and i want to know a little bit of how much of those races you won and the oaks and stuff like that so oh. exotic dance i know you want to race on exotic dance in jamaica that was the oaks or something like that yes i yeah. won the oaks yeah on her and uh on with uh, a horse named fairy queen and another horse named Titania, who she won the Oaks and the Derby for Michael Silvera. Okay. And uh, the Derby, I I won four Derbies. Four Derbies. And if I'm not mistaken, yes, four. And under those four Derbies, which was your, your the special one that, that still comes to mind? Oh, yeah. I know one, you got a story for one of them. Yeah, well, <laughs> a story. Uh, Rika, one that was trained by Ren Gonzalez. Okay. Rico, who yeah. was a closer mm-hmm. right and what happened in this race when the gates open uh you guys know and i know that if you're a rider with some kind of clock in your head you can mm-hmm. read pace mm-hmm. and uh you can also read the horse that is under you yes i like i rode rick a couple of times and i know what he's about he's a closer he has no speed but for some reason when the gates opened, everybody started to save their horse. And I put my horse on lead. And boy, when I tell you, they were cussing. I could hear them cussing from the first time I passed the winning post. Like, what the hell is this gentleman doing? I, I think they would have, they, someone would have shot me in my eye. This horse comes from downtown, you know what I mean? <laughs> downtown, from way closer, closer from downtown. And he's under in the front. So anyway, by the time the, the other guys realized what was happening, that I was going to gallop them to death. Yeah. When they started to chase me at the eight pole, I was like just keeping one pace in front of them, and they had no chance to get in there. It, my horse had a lot of stamina. So anyway, it was like a shock that of about the riding I did because I guess they have never seen a, a Jamaica Derby winner on the lead. Well, from my experience, I haven't heard of another horse going wire to wire, doing a wire job mm-hmm. before then. Maybe today, yes, yeah, but not back then. So anyway, that was the story of that one, and. Um, the rest were all like to Tanya. She was like just an outstanding filly. And I I had a horse I rode was Kingpin. I could be mistaken. It's a three. Maybe I'm getting old, so I forgot one. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I, I rode another horse named Kingpin that also won. That wasn't the favorite in the race. But uh, and the, I had a, I had a choice between the two best horses in the race. And I said, well, I'm going with this one. And people are saying, how can you do that? The, horse, there's a, the other horse is like two classes better, but this horse had the stamina. Mm-hmm. I, I, the, Jamaican, the Jamaican Derby is a, is a mile and a half anyway. 
not like England, England, mile and a half. We're in North America, it's a mile and a quarter. Yeah. I think our Queen Speed is a mile and a quarter too, right? Yes. 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 It takes a stamina for horses to uh, get a mile and a half as a three-year-old. That's right. So, okay. So, all right. So, that was my derby experience there. And um, what is the Oaks? Yes, I went a few times. And number of other races that I can't remember now. I'm too old to remember back so far. You have to jog my memory. I asked me something that I, that I have forgotten. <laughs> No, but what I want to ask you, because you said something when you started about timing and having a clock in your head and that kind of stuff. Now, I speak to Patrick husbands a lot. And Patrick always tells me things like, Sean, let horses roll. Like, I, I watch their ears and, and see how comfortable they right. look and right. you know, all those kind of things that yeah. you don't really hear other good jockeys, other jockeys talk about. Is this, is this something where you big guys, you mm. big jockeys, no. Is it something that you're born with that you know these things that other guys don't know? No, well, it's a trade secret. He's <laughs> <laughs> still riding. He's not going to give away his, his, trade, his But he's right about watching a horse's ears. They'll do this when they're in front and they're yes. relaxed. Yes. They do that this with their ears, put it forward. Yes, correct. You can actually, when you're on the horse, you can actually feel him take a deep breath and relax on the yes he just go soft spit mm -hmm. the bit out and drop the bit and go soft which is the best thing can happen when you're riding a horse when you're running mm -hmm. relax the first half of a race which is the most for me it is the most important thing a rider can do is the first half of a race mm -hmm. because that's where you save and you position yourself you save your horse's energy and you set yourself up for the finish and that is so important but uh, uh, you know american racing and racing on dirt especially right. it creates speed yes. pace is the name of the game on dirt right. when you're running on dirt because what r a lot of riders will do and, and i don't blame them is to try to avoid the kickback we call it kickback when the horse is in front kick back the dirt in the horse's faces in behind because it's uncomfortable for horses getting dirt i mean it's like a sandblaster you got because we're going forward at 35 miles an hour and the sand is coming back at like 30 miles an hour so it's hitting us at a good velocity it's coming back and stinging like a like we're getting shot by a a, a sandblaster yes so you can't blame a racehorse that when he's facing that Yes. His head will kind of start to climb, uh, climb high action. Yes. They don't breathe properly. So it, dirt racing kind of create that kind of pace in a race. Like, mm -hmm. you know, every race you go 22 and change. Yes. And, and then you kind of have two, three, four horses abreast. And they just kill each other. Mm -hmm. And then a horse comes from behind. behind. Yes. Now, it's the horse from behind now, the jockey's job to give his horse a spot behind that he can avoid as much kickback as possible mm -hmm. and that is where uh you know the tradesmanship the horsemanship the jockeymanship comes in you have to place your i know and we have to know our horses as well what we're on we read the race form yes and we know the horses because we usually ride horses more than once so we know what kind of pace our horses have and we know we study the form and know who is the target in the race sometimes if we are the target then you want to give your horse the best spot in a race if not in front it's like stalking second third fourth on the outside and trying to avoid that kickback you're in a closer you don't want to be three or four lengths behind the leaders because that's where the kickback is blinding Mm -hmm. You want to step back even a little further. 
-hmm. So I'm giving away my trade secret here now, but right? Well, there's a lot of youngsters. There's a they're lot of youngsters out there listening, George. So we we I'm and I would, one, riding, of, the, one so, of the things yeah. that this show is that Sean created this show for a lot of the youngsters trying to create yeah. something for them to yes. hopefully to get a chance to get to North America. So yeah. what you're sharing with us, I mean, hopefully you got a lot of ears out there just yeah. prick like those horses are and listening. No, on the opposite listening side, and learning. On the opposite side. <laughs> Mm -hmm. on a on turf riding on turf you want to be behind horses mm -hmm. that's when turf horses tend to be tend to run a little bit freer because the grass is so much co more comfortable for them to run on and there's no kickback right so they they tend to want to run freer more too fast in the beginning than you would want really so a good rider would learn would know how to relax his horse when when they say cover up a horse they mean put him in right in behind another horse and, and just follow that horse and hopefully you can get your mount to relax drop the bit and just relax for the first half of the race before asking them to do any running because that is the key is to get a turf horse to relax in mm -hmm. the first part of a race and they get their breathing going and a nice rhythm going so that is good advice. Yes, that uh, that is solid advice for turf riding, and, and, and the, you know the the European riders does that so well. Yes. <clears throat> no, I remember a, a few years, but when I was training in, in Canada, and I remember Robert Sanks sent me a horse by the name of Musical Treat, and Patrick used to ride her all the time. Right, Patrick used to ride her. He used to keep her close to the pace, and Emil Ramsamy he went to California. And he came back and when he came back patrick was the man you know patrick was yeah everybody was talking about patrick so he came to me one morning and he said he said sean hall i can't get a ride nowhere because everywhere i go is patrick 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 patrick, <laughs> patrick. you know he, he, he said i see him riding this horse for you and he putting this horse on the pace all the time and this horse need to ride run how they do it in in england sit like in the in the mid pack and producer and okay. everything he told me i said well mr ramsami i have the the authority that i could take down mr husbands without any quarrel and i'll put you up sir and let me see what you could do when i put him up on this horse everything he said he put her in behind horses and within the last half of long he just split horses boom and win more daylight yeah, just split exactly. horses and just did it. Yeah, yeah. So the same thing you're saying. And Perfect example, I, yes. Yeah, I thought it was a fluke. It was so <laughs> nice, he did it twice. You know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, did it twice. Yeah, you did it twice. I mean, yeah. So what you're saying is very true, man. Those turf horses like to. Yeah, exactly the opposite of what dirt horses are. Yes. Okay, George. So um, I want to jump back a little bit to Jamaica before we get, because we've got to come yes. into the Toronto area soon. So yes. in the seventies, you know, things got a little. If you don't mind sharing a little bit of that with us, because I know things got a little tough, and you had to make your way to North America. If if you want to touch on that a little bit and give us a little thing and lead us into coming to the big boys up here. Yes. No, but before you go, right before you go, also because why you also want to know also that with carry both of them together now you were a minority in jamaica itself as, as being chinese yes yes you came good to point. canada good and you were son. another minority, <laughs> minority. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you double <laughs> but that's why no that's why you interest me so much man because <laughs> You are and minority it, all over <laughs> and managed to do what you did. And you know still, what I mean? Still, still rise to the cage and he rose to the cage. Yeah. I mean, come on with now. A lot on his shoulder, me, with a lot of weight on his shoulder. How, tell me how you, how can you be a minority in Jamaica? I mean, I've been to Jamaica. Jamaica is one of the most intimidating places I've <laughs> ever been to ride. You know what I mean? It's and crazy Sean, you know, there. Tell you me. know, Sean, I have never been to China. <laughs> my, my grandparents are from. I've never been to the mainland. <laughs> yes, so <laughs> getting back to um, the 70s, early 70s. 70s yeah, the 70s. Yeah, yes. 
somehow the the country's mood just changed to, to a violent mood. We had a change of government and um, the, the, the masses were chanting a few time now, which in Jamaica means it's our time now. Yeah, right. You know, uh, what they, they meant, I couldn't understand what I mean. What they mean, it's our time now. It's always been their time, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But because of the the the, uh, the 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 change in government, I guess it was Michael Manley at the time that just won, and he, I guess he promised them, you know, the world, the, the masses. Every politician, so, every politician. yeah, exactly. <laughs> their, their promises, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, anyway, violence erupted, and. Uh, to me, I will tell you how it affected me uh, personally. But what scared me was the people that I was writing for. My business was dissipating right in front of me. Laurie Silvera was my main man, Michael Silvera. Mm -hmm. They just left and didn't even tell me a word that they were wow. leaving. Aaron wow. Lim, Michael Lim. Yes. They were my, you know, they were my first call guys right. in, in a race. And when you were leave, when people were leaving Jamaica in those days, yes. it has to be a secret because oh. if you were traveling, you would be allowed 50 US dollars. I swear to God, wow. 50 US dollars you were allowed to leave the country with on wow. any trip so if if people get wind of you having us dollars because you're gonna travel you know mm -hmm. you're a target to be robbed wow right mm -hmm. so anyway i got scared when i saw all my businesses were, were you know dwindling and uh, uh one morning i was kidnapped by a bunch of gangsters and uh, wow they had me at gunpoint. First time in my life I looked down a gun barrel. Oh. Didn't like it so much that I wet my pants. And <laughs> no. they, they, they shoved me in my car and they jumped in the back seat and they said, drive. And they told me to drive around some of came on a spark bushes to their leader who wanted to set some races. Uh -huh. And I kind of just used my calm on my head and I says, okay, all right, I am agreed with you. I'll go do what you ask me to do. I'll meet you back. This was a Friday morning and we had races on a Saturday. And I, I told him, I'll meet you back here and I'll let you know which races I'm going to set. But mm -hmm. I can't walk around with you with this gun in my back. You have to set me free. And they said, okay, good, tomorrow morning. So I just jumped in my car, went straight to my house, packed my bags, and I grabbed my girlfriend, who is my wife at this right now, Shelly, her name mm -hmm. is. And I was off on an Air Jamaica plane. And I just, I didn't go to, uh, I didn't go to Canada at that point. I went to Florida where I had most of my family just to just to take it in and cool my yes. head yeah yes you know this was like you know very distraught to me yes anyway after three weeks i went back to jamaica to get the rest of my stuff to pack the rest of my stuff and leave yes and um uh the authorities police and so forth and the, the affluent people got wind of me coming back to Jamaica and they they encouraged me to stay uh -huh. and one of one of the these owners they took me to um the police commissioner right who was a heavyweight guy in the police force so when I went there they introduced me to a commissioner Stevens I think his last name was he says George we can't let these thugs you know, run 
people people like you out of this country, chase you out of this country. Yes. So we are going to, he handed me a handgun and he says, look, (laughs) if this ever happens to you again, defend yourself. Uh No questions asked. Just defend yourself. Well, I was like not 19 or 20 years old and never held a gun in my hand before. I was shaking and I told the commissioner, I said, you know, uh, it don't feel right to me because uh, my I'm shaking right now and I don't know what it would feel like to shoot a man, mm-hmm. even in my defense. Yeah. Uh, I'd probably get scared and they'd take the gun away from me. Or I probably shoot myself in the foot. (laughs) So he says, "Well, you know, it's a it's a six shot. It's a it got six bullets. So you know, just use it and defend yourself." I said, "Well, what if there are seven guys out there? What happens to me?" (laughs) So anyway. A long story short, he said, okay, he's going to give me pro- police protection. Mm-hmm. And I was riding around for a few weeks with two big cops in the back of my car. And um, they were staying on my veranda, on my porch mm-hmm. at nights. And they, they would switch shifts to other new guys. And it was, um, I felt a bit more secured. But mm-hmm. after a couple of weeks of that, it was too much. Yeah, yeah. I'd be riding around with two big five. They, they probably weighed five hundred pounds. <laughs> shot in the back of my car was shot by then. Flat <laughs> <laughs> out my shots in the back of my car. <laughs> and <laughs> so, all right. After it is after then that you know, I I told my wife that. My, it was, she was still my girlfriend then that it's time because I was, mm-hmm. although I was picking up mounts still mm-hmm. and still yes. winning a lot of races, I saw where the violence was, was getting worse. And yes. my friends who are not resource people, just my regular friends from school and so forth, they were just missing at the end of every week. We will ask, where is such and such? And they're gone. They're gone yeah. to move to America, Canada, or, or England. Yes. But nobody knows when who was leaving because of that that yeah. uh, thing where the money. Because everybody was mostly selling. All the people that left, they were selling their homes, their belongings, changing out for you know U.S. dollars, mm-hmm. and sh- you know leave the country. And they were. They were uh, scared because if they anybody knew they were leaving, that means they have they have U.S. Right. dollars. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You yes. can report them, rob them, and you can't complain to the police that you were robbed of U.S. dollars because that's a crime as it is. Yeah. Yes. You have more than fifty U.S. dollars. Wow. Yeah. So that was the scenario, and I said, "Well, I myself." I I stole my own money out of the country. <laughs> At the time, six hundred dollars I could get uh-huh. out of the country. Six hundred U.S. dollars. Wow! And I we went to Canada because Laura Silvera was there, and most of my business that was there in Canada. Yes. yes. So when I landed in Canada, it's uh, Laura Silvera and and the limbs. Crosby and Mike Lim, mm-hmm. Laurie Silver and Mike Silver, they they you know really helped me out. Laurie Silver was the man that applied for a work permit for me right. and got me started. And right. Mike Lim was the one that put me up in an uh, he had an apartment for a few days, and mm-hmm. then I went to they were racing at Fort Erie at the time, mm-hmm. and then after that. Errol Lim uh, put me up in his his uh, home for the end of the season. We, I went to there in uh, in August of uh-huh. 1976. Right. So I started at Fort Erie. Uh, started was successful from the first mount I rode 
mm-hmm. or Michael Silvero. She won 50 some to one like that. Wow. Longest shot on the board. That was a Wednesday. And uh, I didn't get a ride, another ride until the, the Friday and the Saturday. I had three mounts each day, and all three, all six of them won. I took three winners, three two days in a row. And that was that was that was with Mr. Silvera. Yeah, Mr. Silvera. And well, that's just a just when you start, just just when you started. Mr. Go ahead. Yeah, a couple of Mr. Silvera's friends gave me some mounts too. So that's just like start when you started in Jamaica. He put you on the right horse with the right time. Yes. Boy, I tell you, that man did me, did me great. I can't, I can't forget him. He, so who, who, when you came up, did you get an agent right away, or you started off just right in for those guys before an agent yeah, first? Yes, yeah, no agent at the time. No agent at the yes, time. Uh, so at then, the time, I was, I was just word of mouth, and uh, Laurie, and and Errol Lim knew a lot of people, so he got me quite a bit of mounts then, and. Actually, Errol was the Errol Lim was the one that got me an agent. His name was Simon Shears. Simon Shears, if you're still alive when you're out there, man, thanks for the beginning. Uh, he was an ex boxer, big guy. Oh. So oh. I said, Yes, I'll sign you. And if they don't give me a mount, you just give them a, 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 a punch. In <laughs> big, strong guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there there was that was my experience leaving jamaica yes okay. so when you no, got because there, i found out no because a, a lot of jamaicans came to barbados also nigel nunez Benny yeah. reynolds tony wright you know what i mean we got guys like sprinter i don't know if you know sprinter eric walker trainers you know I mean? right those are trainers um to, um, Nigel Nunes was a trainer. Nigel Nunes, right? yes. His son is training in Barbados still, Andrew Nunes. He has a brother, um, Bubba Nunes, that trains in Jamaica Bubba still. Is his son, yes, yes. Yes. I know of them. Um, those guys came to think. We had grooms like Eric Walker. He used to ride too. I don't know if you know him. Sprinter, Palmer. Palmer's another guy. He said he rode with you, he told me. A Palmer. But, Which Palmer we're talking about? Um, no. Nope. Palmer, that's all they call him, Palmer. I know him as Palmer. No. But he's a pretty tall guy. And he oh, said he okay. rode with you back, back in the day. He okay. came to Barbados and he's based in Barbados now. Yes. So that was my um, travel from Jamaica to, so, to so uh, within, Woodbine. Within two years, within two years, you're coming to Woodbine. Did yes. you? You, you you dominate this place so much in two years you you were you were on the top how did you do that so that like that well i tell you i was god bless believe me <laughs> you talk about right place at the right time uh the first snowstorm that hit that first year i was thinking of this is the wrong place <laughs> the first time <laughs> a snowstorm hit while I was riding, <laughs> and uh, I, I, it's the first time I, w- I ever cried and no one was beating on me. <laughs> I mean, my eyes were draining. <laughs> I was crying because it was so cold. <laughs> I never felt this before, uh, and no one prepares you for this, you know. No, you know, no, riding no, no. On, on a horseback, uh, you know, going. 35 miles an hour in a yeah. headwind. Yeah, yeah. Snow, that wind cold, chill. Minus that degree wind, wind chill. chill. Oh, man. But anyway, I was doing so good and uh, I was making good money. And I, you know, I, I didn't th- I didn't think at that time to go back to Jamaica because, well, of the crime that was taking place. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what I did go back to Jamaica after like 12 years in Canada. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, already made some decent money. Yes. And my health was going down the drain too. What year? Uh, this was in the late eighties. Mm-hmm. My, uh, I was trying. I was struggling with weight. And yeah. you ask any writer out there that struggles with weight. Yeah, yeah. You know, the demand, the demand it put on your, your system, your body. Mm-hmm. Well, let's, this, let's 
let's not ki- let, let's not kill your awesome story that you still have to come with that that way issue yet because you dominate so much in two years and you the agent that you had you still had that agent with those two years that you you did that with or you changed your no agent? i had switched agent to um uh gomez okay you know, so avalina so, gomez the great avalina gomez well, let's let's and introduce i want to introduce you to somebody i want to introduce you to somebody since you made that switch so Brent, could you introduce us to the person that we're here? Darren. How you doing, buddy? Look at this, Darren, man. That's why man, it's good to, to see that, you. So happy sure. to see you, man. Now, this guy, man, is like you know, it's family. It's actually his family. <laughs> Because Avalino and his dad, Mickey, they were like my family. You know, we came sort of close from part of the world. I'm from Jamaica. They were from yes. Cuba. We were right. like only 90 miles away. So we're yes. from, you know, the same position in the Caribbean. Yes. And So George, when, Darren has been let me tell you this all along. In you. one sec, just one quick second. When I landed in Toronto... Uh-huh. The only jock that really friended me was Avalino. Oh, he, he, Avalino Gomez. He was like a, a big brother to me. Wow. And he showed me the you know the ropes and the people that I should try to ride for. Mm-hmm. And um, when I was actually I switched agent at one time, and I I had an agent who was wasn't really fear to me because mm. his brother was a writer too. <laughs> I won't call his name. No. But they were <laughs> they were cheating you know who that is, from I do. <laughs> yeah, but I won't call his name. <laughs> and um, Abelino saw this and he said, you know what? I'm gonna get my brother to leave Kentucky and come here and take your book, which was Mickey mm. Gomez. Wow. wow. The father Darren. of Darren right here. Wow. Oh Wow. That's a great yeah. story, man. Wow. Yeah. yeah, I know. I know. Darius has a lot of stories to tell, and we got. A, we're gonna do a lot of listening from you two guys sharing a lot of stuff with us. But there's some okay. races, Brent. You have to show us so we can just get our audience, you know, familiar with a few things first before we get into the both of these guys' um, stories. Can I say right. something about a uh, 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 races that we should show? Mm-hmm. You probably don't have it, but there were times when angel cardero used to come over and visit no, uh, us a visit with, and ride wow. big horses yes and this one instant they took me off of my horse which are the favorites of this race which was a horse named pro council right pro and i was council? mad because he was like the best pro council. pro council right so they kicked me off and put angel cardero and yes. here i am I'm riding a horse of Donny Campbell, my the man who I won two of the Triple Crown races of the, the Breeders' Cup and the Prince of Wales with oh. two uh, two claiming horses. Uh-huh. He put me on a horse named Institutional, and here, here it's like God made this happen. Coming into coming six and a half furlongs on the Marshall Turf course. We jumped over the dirt and there he was, Angel, in front of me, and I had a target in front of me. My horse didn't reckon to, to win the race. She was a filly running against Colts at the time. And I put my everything into it and I said, God help me come down the street. I want to call <laughs> this guy because he came in and he stole my mouth. <laughs> and I nailed him on the wire. And that is like, so wow. satisfying for me you know but i understand it's business yes because i used to go back to jamaica and i would kick guys off of their mounts too <laughs> yes so it's a two-way street and i understand you know what i'm saying yes it, it, it happens in racing but, yeah. so so it's safe to say darren that was one of the races that the jamaicans had went by rocking yes oh i tell you <laughs> I grew up there, Sean, yes. and he come back to ride Candon Cameron yes. for Trevor Swan yes. because uh, Dave was, Penna was his regular rider, and he thought the grass at Samson's was greener. 
Yes. And my dad and Trevor orchestrated this move to put him on Candid Cameron. And I wasn't the biggest fan of Candid Cameron's, but yeah. he was a good horse. And I'm telling you, he put this horse on the lead, put the whole race to sleep, <laughs> and that whole grandstand went mental. And you could feel that thing. And I mean, it's a big grandstand. You could feel it shake when this guy hit the wire. Wow. That was the Jamaicans there. You, heard, you know, the Jamaicans used to beat the wall. And <laughs> <laughs> Do we have that race, Brett? Yeah, show that race, Brett. Let's, let's, Which one is that? Is that that the is Candy Cameron. Yeah, no, 1993. The 1993 race. Here it is. Yes. yes. They're off in the Dominion Day Stakes. Ben Burr broke well. Toward the inside, Candid Cameron's going to take the early lead. Candid Cameron has the early lead. Blitzer right on his heels in second. Ben Burb on the outside. Attard has a snug hold of him. Another gray just to his inside. That's Cozine's Prince as they move in front of us for the first time. Hosang has a Candid Cameron under restraint as they run into the clubhouse turn. Cozine's Prince comes on second now. Ben Burb is third. Blitzer saves ground into the first turn. Most of Valiant is fourth. The weighted guy a little closer than usual as they run to the three-quarter pole. And in behind that one is Powerful Punch. And Candid Cameron is unopposed. First quarter in 24 and 2 and half a mile in 48 and a fifth. They're moving along the backstretch now. Candid Cameron a length and a half. Cozine's Prince is second. Just to his outside is Ben Burb. Witzer is within three lengths of the lead and currently fourth. Then there's a gap of six. Most of Valiant is fifth. Powerful Punch is sixth. And elated Guy is seventh. Three quarters in one, 13 and two. Candid Cameron Hosang will try to take this one wire to wire. Blitzer has an opening inside of Cozine's Prince and Landry sends him on through. Ben Burb is now third. Cozine's Prince is back to fourth. Powerful punches, fifth most valiant, awaited guy. They come to the quarter pole. Candid Cameron off the rail in front by two and a half. Blitzer runs at him from the inside. Cozine's Prince Ben Burb on the outside. Awaited guy with that big run of his is kicking in weight, but Candid Cameron Hosang pulling out all the stops to get him home. They come to the 16th pole in front by five, and he will not be caught. Candid Cameron wins the Dominion Day, finishing second with a late run. Powerful punch, and Blitzer was third. Hey, did you see how much times I look back? <laughs> yeah, I remember that race like it was yesterday. Hey, Darren, tell them about when we had the jockey challenge. Uh, five riders from Woodbine and five from uh, California with, uh, with our Willie Shoemaker and all them guys came over. Oh, yeah, Three absolutely. Races. Yeah. They didn't get it. They didn't get anything. <laughs> Three Nothing. races, and I was is so that's his five five riders from each team, and if there's more than ten horses in the race, then also eligibles would be ridden by whoever, which the whoever was me because I wasn't on the team. Okay. After winning, after winning, 
the leading rider, they didn't pick me on the team. Wow. <laughs> and I rode two of the extras, not in the competition. I was excluded from the competition wherever I ran. Yes. And I won two of the races. <laughs> <laughs> then you should have heard the Jamaicans. <laughs> hold, hold I tell you. Hold you guys on, have all been there. That grandstand was vibrating. <laughs> but you, hold on one minute. One minute. I want to go back to what you just said there just now. Yes. You were you were the leading writer, but you weren't put on the team. Why was that? Yes. I don't know. I think it, what he was saying in the first part, I was a minor. Okay. Maybe that has something to do with it. Minority, man. That was not on the team. Wow. Mm -hmm. And you know, but yet but, you came and won two of their races. Won two of the races. <laughs> and it was like Hey, must have been God. God ain't sleeping, right? <laughs> <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> so, Dan, you got some great stories to share, man. Come well, on. I, I, I tell you, I got I got a couple of really well, we good some, favorites. We kind, we kind of jumped the gun with our races. We gone ahead with our races because we got races from the '77 and what other races, right? 1980. Got yeah. 1980 and okay. So well, let's let's jump get back to, to them. Let's yeah. get back a little bit to those races first and then let Darren kind of fill this in a little bit because Darren have a, a lot more familiarity with, with, with him than us. So if you want to show well, some more of those. One of the races is the 1977 Vigil Stakes. Do you remember who that horse was, George? The Vigil. Is that the before I was born? <laughs> 1977. I was three years old. <laughs> King you Haven three. Farms. Remember King I can't Haven remember who trained by John Tamara Jr. Kovarak. Kovarak. That's yeah. it. It's the That's only horse I can up. remember. Yeah, you yeah, fired, right, yeah, fired me right after. There at the post. Uh, they're off. Blacksmith in the center with Northern Affair coming away quickly on the inside. Norcliffe closing up third in the center. Coverack and now Brilliant Sandy shooting through on the rail to challenge for the lead. That's Brilliant Sandy coming on. Heading around the clubhouse turn. Brilliant Sandy now on top. Northern Affair is second. Blacksmith third. Norcliffe is fourth. Coverack is fifth and Tuxedo Max sixth along the rail. Midway of the turn, Northern Affair coming on to take the lead. Brilliant Sandy saving ground on the inside. And as they move into the back stretch, Brilliant Sandy on the rail. Northern Affair right alongside. And Norcliffe now challenging for the lead on the outside. Blacksmith is fourth between horses. Coverack is fifth. And Tuxedo Mac. Coming up to the half, Brilliant Sandy leads by a neck. Northern Affair is in the center, and Norcliffe is on the outside. And swinging around the far turn, that's Brilliant Sandy by a head. Norcliffe second, Northern Affair third. Blacksmith is fourth, Coverack is fifth, and Tuxedo Mac. Midway of the far turn, that's Norcliffe now gaining the lead by two lengths. Brilliant Sandy is second, Northern Affair third, and Tuxedo Mac coming up on the outside with Coverack. Up to the head of the stretch, Norcliffe showing the way by three lengths. Turning into the stretch, Norcliffe on top, Brilliant Sandy is second, Northern Affair, Tuxedo Mac on the extreme outside, and Coverack now moving up in the center. Norcliffe on top with Coverack now closing up second, Tuxedo Mac is third. That's Norcliffe leading and Coverack coming very fast on the outside. Coverack and Norcliffe together. Hey, wasn't that wasn't that uh, Avellino on the horse that finished second? Wasn't that Norcliffe? Norcliffe. Wasn't that Avellino riding it? I, I, to be honest, George, I don't know. I know he didn't ride him in the plate. Jeff Feld did. He rode military okay. bearing. Well, I know Papa. I used to call him Papa. I know him from anywhere. That was okay, him. That, that could have that been him on him. Yeah. But anyway, but I know he didn't sorry, ride him in the that plate. was him. Sorry, Papa. I didn't know <laughs> 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 <laughs
It was, yeah, it was, it was, close, yeah. It was really close, yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> no, man. Great. See what happens when you beat the master, you don't get to ride the horse back. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even get the client. <laughs> so what happened there? How do you get fired? Yes. Well, you know, um, John Tamaro was a trainer then, and his guy was really Donny Macbeth. You know Don Macbeth? He was really a good... No, good. I think it was Donny Seymour. For John Tamaro? Is that not no, now Don you got Macbeth? me thinking. No, you're yeah. right. Is Seymour Don come with Atfield. With Atfield, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Hey, you're the one that's getting old, man. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha, Darren. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh what else did we miss out um how do you got fired oh you got fired how yeah you got fired yeah yeah that's that's how i got fired because he wanted donny macbeth to come in and ride these horses oh. so he just and you know uh who did a great job was Errol Lim got me into that barn you know uh speaking to uh the uh the, the manager then what was it i, I forgot his name but Errol Lim was very friendly with that guy and um he talked me into that bar okay. so uh how we got fired i don't know if Errol must have <laughs> must have cost him off because the horse didn't win the win the way we want he wanted me to ride the horse uh -huh. It, it was like he was such a guy john to marry you have to write to his instructions oh. to the t and if you lose then it, it is not your fault the writer uh -huh. Uh -huh. but i couldn't sit still for things like that when i know better in a race sometimes opportunity happens yes that you get a you get a run on the, on the rail or somebody goes by the horse gets shot off and you get get a, you know get around that horse and yeah. you get a break and take first run and sometimes it happens and it it, it works out for the best mm -hmm. but um and then i you risk taking the blame if you get beat but then you look like a genius if you <laughs> if it works out for you <laughs> but i was a, i i'm i used to get blame a lot because I take things in my own hand. Yes. Because when the gate opens, man, sometimes all hell break loose. That's yeah. what great writers are supposed to do, though, right? Yes. Take the things in your own hands. Yeah. Exactly. You know? right. I mean, what, what, the, races, what, what did Lester Piggott say? Lester Piggott was a man that didn't speak much at all. Uh -huh. He barely said a few words to me when I visited visit him at his home. Wow. was a very quiet guy and i can see why he used to diet so bad yes he was a tall they call he used to call him long fellow because he mm. was he was close to like six foot tall but was i was just mentioning under the terms of what he said about giving a, a good a, a jockey instructions what was that say that he had, would say it was a big yes Can you guys remember that what he said that you don't give a good jockey instructions or, or, a, or a bad jockey can't carry them out or something like that exactly it yeah. is right I and mean, you have to put a good rider on your horse and say for instance the, the rider knows the horse has ridden the horses uh Before. more multiple times yes then why are you uh giving instructions giving instructions, giving instructions. yeah sometimes on uh, from the trainer's standpoint of view a horse probably not running as good as they want him to run and they're trying different tactics or they train the horse different change their feed change something and they just want to see if they can get the horse to run better mm -hmm. now i see that point but that's not my my point of view if the race doesn't unfold the way they instructed me and i get an opportunity in a race that's given to me easily like an inside run and i have a ton of horse under me i will usually take take that 
advantage and if i come out a loser i blow the race i'll take the blame mm -hmm. you know so for, I, for, I, in, for instance when you rode candy camera there you you were you were on the lead but you came you push out about what three wide what was the purpose yes. of doing that in your in that race he was the type of horse that likes to be a little off the rail okay, okay. plus they used to call me overland hosang <laughs> okay, because I took overland route, which I have my wall is on the outside. Listen, listen, guys, I got this saying. A friend of mine sent me what Lester Pickett said. A good okay. jockey doesn't need orders, and a bad jockey couldn't carry them out. <laughs> anyway, so that's it's best it. not to give any. <laughs> <Good shot. laughs> there you go. That's what I that's what I wanted to do. <laughs> but you know, you you've heard um Bob Bufford and those guys, Todd Pletcher. Mm. when they interview them and ask them you know what they tell the rider to do and they said they don't when they put riders like you know john velasquez and big money mike they call him yes mike yes. smith yes and they have ridden the horse already what kind of instruction you give those guys you don't you don't that is and isn't that why we're getting paid the big bucks of course uh, yeah. To read yeah. that race form, yeah. yeah, and not only the horses that we are riding, we know, we know the opposition, what their style of running is, mm -hmm. who's which horse has the target on their backs, could be the same horse that we're riding that is the target, that the favorite in a race is usually the target. Yes, but so, George, the question I'm going to ask you now, because. You never got involved in training horses, right? No. But secretly. That, secretly. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I tell you anyway now that it's over, right? Sure, no, let the best secrets go now. <laughs> and they can't and they can't suspend me. <laughs> Back in Jamaica, right? Yes. A good friend of mine, he he was pretty a wealthy guy. He he owned a lot of trucks. Yes. And um he had a he had a, hand, a string of horses his family member used to train for him i can call his name because he's probably on his way out That's to <laughs> jagai henry jagai was his name train the yeah. horses so he came the owner came to me i won't call his name so not to get him in the trouble yeah. <laughs> he he said george I would like to you to train the horses for me and his his family member the trainer Jagai will oversee the mm -hmm. horses but I will do the training so I said okay you know it's a new venture mm -hmm. and I'm not going there to do any of the hard lifting <laughs> I'm just gonna uh, program the horses yes so he had this once horse that was breaking walking out of the stone gate every time it ran mm -hmm. it used to just walk out of the gate and get left by half a furlong so when i saw the took a look at the, at the barn i took a look at the horse and she was so light light in her frame there's yeah. hardly any meat on her body yeah that this was the first horse i'm gonna run for it mm -hmm. so for, the, for two weeks i just let her jog around the track and gain some condition on it that's great put some meat on her body and I, in the race she i can't ride her because she has 90 pounds can you imagine back in the days horses the bottom weight was 84 pounds you could actually get a kid to ride at 84 pounds and but the top george, weight was 140. george like myself and brett we rode at 84 pounds when we started man <laughs> my first winner was 89 pounds and i carried a big saddle with a weight bag to catch the weight as i you weighed Brett? 75 pounds yeah Brett, you did that yeah i was 15 years old <laughs> what the hell happened after that man <laughs> <laughs> you discovered the kitchen right uh, absolutely <laughs> yes. on my second ride i rode at 84 pounds too so yeah. I mean, and then I, I grew into my father's frame man so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so all right let me just finish my story yes, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> the race comes up for the horse he's got 90 pounds yes. and i said it, we had a class system then 
yes. the handicapping class system back back then. So she was one bad race away from dropping to the lower class. Yes. And I was riding the, the top weight horse, the best horse in the race. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, my friend, I'm going to win the race. Your horse is going to run down the track as usual, walk out yeah. of the start gate, <laughs> and, and he'll drop in class. <laughs> Here we go, the race day. I am break out of the gate, and I look over, and she broke smart today. She was <laughs> first time in her life she broke good. <laughs> had to jog in for two weeks and just run. Uh -huh. So anyway, come in the stretch. I'm in front at the eighth pole, and I looked over and I saw this horse coming at me, run by me down the stretch and win the race. <laughs> and the owner is betting on my horse <laughs> that I rode, and his horse beat him. So, <laughs> so I after the race, I went home. I gave him a phone call and I said, "Look." That's that's it. That's my training. That's my training career. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy, the guy was good. You know, I continued riding for him. He had some good horses. Continued riding for him. He didn't take yeah. it as as anything. But you all know, you did for that horse, again. you helped that horse. You just took the pain away from just jogging her together, feeling good again. Yes, then, that's what oh, happened. Yeah, just freshen her up. She didn't need any work. You no, know, or any no. galloping or anything, no, no. and that's what she came bouncing at the at the track. She was fresh and she felt yeah. nice, and she just yeah. sprang out of the gate and beat me. So yeah. there you go. Uh, uh, that was my training career, in a that, nutshell. Well, that answered my question. That answered my question. I said you great guys always get it wrong when you have the yeah. chance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Darren. You're yes. sitting there quietly. Come on, give us some of those stories that you know about that you can tell us a little bit about. Oh, little I, I, I tell you, I got, I got a couple that I just. Okay, well, forget. come on. The okay, George, we're, the, we're at the, we're at the A meet, or? we're at the A meet in Fort Erie, and uh, George and my dad are splitting an apartment, and I come down to, uh, um, well, I started with with Mike Silvera and ended up with Laurie, mm -hmm. and, uh, um. My dad had asked George about these two horses. And I forget the other one, but George said, I, I kind of like this one better. So that night we go for a walk to the, to the mall. And George gets a form. And I can see he's not saying nothing, but he ain't happy. You can see it. <laughs> so we get back to the apartment and he says to me, who do you like in this race? Well, I know the story. I ain't jumping in the middle of that. No chance. I'm not jumping in the middle. And he says, no, 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 there's no trouble. I said, George, you got to hope it rains. This horse has no chance. He takes his form and he goes to bed. Five o'clock, because I'm. they each got a room and I got a cot in the living room. Yeah. And I'm underneath the window. Five o'clock in the morning, he's shaking me. Get up, get up. I said, what's the matter? I think the place is on fire or something. He pulls back the, the curtains and he points. And he says, Quantra, because it's pouring rain. <laughs> and she went by 10. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he just pointed rain. and said, Quantra. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's a good one. Hey, wait, yeah. let, me, let me tell you something, guys. It was all like, you know, happy times and a bed of roses there when I was there. Yes. Remember I was telling you about um, Errol Lim yes. that took me in like a father? Yes. Uh, after I won my first championship there, leading rider, he got sick and he ca cancer and uh, yes. Yes. it was like terminal. And, you know, I watched him wither away. Yes. And when he passed away, I, you know, I was shocked. You know, I was in despair mm -hmm. to see how he suffered before he, he died. And that kind of shook me up a bit, and my I think it affected my riding a little bit. Mm -hmm. And no sooner I got back on my feet, who you think happened? Avelino Gomez died on the oh, yeah. uh, right there on the track. A horse trampled him, yeah. and his there goes another big brother of mine. Oh. Like the, a year after, he went to the hospital and he spent overnight, and because of. I don't know the reason why they didn't operate on him, didn't do surgery. 
he passed away. And that just sent me back in a tailspin again. And like two, two years in succession that I had this tragedy that shook me and sent me in a tailspin. So it was so sad, you know, it, it, uh, it shook me to the bone and I, um, it took me a while to recover. Uh, I mean, I cried like a baby and me, his dad, uh, Mickey, one day we just sat and cried like two babies, mm -hmm. the way uh, it shocked us. And then after I finished riding, in, I left Canada, then I got a phone call that his dad passed away too. It was from uh, kidney failure, right, Darren? He had yeah. Kidney failure. Yeah. See, what, what, what had happened is he got a transplant and he was doing good, but uh, that SARS thing had just come out and they yeah. ended up giving him some kind of vaccine that attacked the organ and oh, man. It just, he had a better chance of winning the lottery than what happened, but he was unlucky. So Darren is is maybe the last standing of my family from Woodbine, from the <laughs> Gomez family. Wow, that's yeah. great, man. So we did a good thing bring them on. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait. I great to see him. Son. Where's Darren? He, he, not, not, uh, where is um, Avelino's son, the one that played uh, hockey? He lives in uh, Georgetown. He um, Do you guys he's retired. Avelino? Pardon? Does this guy know, Sean, you know yeah, about yeah, him? Yeah, I know him. Yeah, Avelino's yeah, yeah. Son. Yeah, man. He, He's uh, he's retired. He lives in Georgetown. He's got a couple of dogs. He's um, he's with Florida. Barb Mitchell, and they go to Florida every winter. They got a bunch of horses, and uh, you know he paid his dues. He's, he's having some yeah, fun. Yeah. Okay. I think he's still in Florida right now. He well, doesn't well, like to come back until it's suntan and weather. Well, I want to ask you though, George, how did it feel to win the Avelino Gomez? award man tell me about that oh yeah man wow. yes tell yeah. Me, man. Thrill, tell man. yeah yeah i i tell you i was thrilled to death uh -huh. and when i got to woodbine i cost them why it took so long to get me this book. <laughs> <laughs> i should be the first guy to get this thing so, so did you get him some clots some yeah. all kinds of bumpers and, and clots. Yeah. <laughs> I see you were hanging the Jamaicans. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I worked my three years in Laurie Severe Barnes and I used to hear that every day. Sean, we can shoot your bumble clots, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I know it very well. <laughs> yeah, you got it, Sean. <laughs> Man. But to be, but to be, to be pre presented with that has to be, you know. Yeah. There's a high point in my life. Yes. And uh, they, you know, well deserved. Really yeah. yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, the arrangements were made for my travel by uh, Era Limson, who is Steve Lim, yes. who was the Saracen secretary at Woodbine. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he arranged it, him and Mike Lim, who is also was a clocker at Woodbine. Jesus. So it's a big family. I think you know. I think he hustling book now. Mike Lim, yes, yes, yeah. he's got uh, a Jamaican kid. Oh, they're winning a few. They're they're yeah. you know doing all right for a start. For, you see this the guy season. here on the screen right now. He's Keith Pollard. He always told me about you when he came to Canada the first time, man. Always Pollard. talked about you. He's a Barbadian guy. Keith, he worked Keith. for Uncle Buddy. Oh yes. Then okay, then I remember him. Keith yeah, right. was a tall guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Good groom, I real good horse. Keith, yeah, yeah, yeah man, Keith. good horses. Yeah. Look who uh, is here now, Jennifer Morrison. Yes, she's yeah. Jennifer Morrison is a sovereign award writer. Okay. She's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, need goggles, I need my goggles on to see. Okay. Jennifer. Big. All right. She's a three times summer award writer. Okay. I just book, so she's great. <laughs> and she's a friend of this show. I mean, love her. <laughs> okay. There is great. Paul Marino. Paul Marino, man. Paul hey. Marino, say hi. Oh, you know, Tom. 
Yeah, yeah I mentioned well, him last time. He's the one that put uh, me and Slade together. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Wow. Well, I don't know Tom, but I know he loves dogs. <laughs> George is pretty funny, eh? Actually, George, you I would, know his, you, you would like know his dad. His dad, Peter, had horses with Sammy D. And Peter D. D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would know him Peter there. Peter D. Pasquale, right? Yeah. Pasquale, yeah. Yes. Darren, can you find one another one of those 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 joke um, stories for oh, us again? Yeah. Come on, give us another one. Come on, you gotta keep us keep us going here, Darren. We're we're in the parking lot outside the race office, and I'm just hanging on as a kid. And George and my dad are talking. How old were you, Darren? Uh, I'd have been about 13, 14, okay. somewhere okay. in there. All right. And uh, George is talking to my dad, and he doesn't have his attention. <laughs> and finally, he says to him, "What's the matter?" He says, I got a leak in this trunk and I can't figure out where it is. He says, well, you'll find it after. He kept talking and and this, this leak was just bothering my dad. So George says to him, you want to know where the leak is? I'll show you where the leak is. Open up the trunk. So my dad opens the trunk. George climbs in. He says, close the, the trunk. <laughs> and he sees where the sunshine's coming through. And he tells him, that's where your leak is. Now can we finish our conversation? <laughs> <laughs> It's a normal thing in Jamaica. You get locked up in a trunk and sleep there. The leak is coming so that was your first time in the back of a trunk. Yeah. Yeah. No, but yeah, probably the first time willingly going in. Yeah. I was a legal I was always a legal guy, you see? So okay. I'm the one that is locked up in the trunk. But George, I gotta ask you this, man, because as a Jamaican, were you close to Bob Marley? Okay, all right. <laughs> I like this one. Uh, I knew Bob Marley <clears throat> from from the days when before he was Bob Marley. Yes, tell me, like, tell me more. Wow. Oh my God, <laughs> he, he 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 just started being a dread. You yeah, know, during his life, and back in the days, we're talking about the sixties. People didn't accept dreadlocks yet. Yes. Yes. They were they started as something that was uh, unclean. Yes, you don't groom your hair. Mm -hmm. So uh, Bob, the, the Rastafarian wasn't as popular yet, and Bob was becoming uh, a Rastafarian. Mm -hmm. But because he was very close to his right hand man, Skill Cole, everybody knows Skill Cole was like his manager. Okay. I knew him because we were neighbors oh. in the same uh, neighborhood we came from. So racehorsing was like the sport every week on a Saturday. Yes. Everybody would like to catch a bit. Of course. So Skill Cole uh, took Bob Marley to my home on a couple occasions. Skill Cole was looking for winners, tips, yes. right? And uh, I think Bob was very interested in horse racing too and probably the gambling aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Because remember, he's not Bob Marty yet. Yes, yes. He's the guy from he's the broke. ghetto. He's struggling. Broke. Yeah, yes. coming out of the ghetto and he's struggling too. Hasn't made any hits yet. Yes. Made some records but hasn't had any big hits yet. I didn't, it was international yet. It didn't go international yet. So um, that's how I got to know him. Not for a good reason that, you know, I would, would have liked to have known him as, uh, as a, him as a musician and I as a resource writer. But and did just you think two was, guys. Did you think well, it was special along those times? Do you think that you felt that magic? Do you think it was, Heading in to be the star it turned out to be. Uh, Bob is yes. music. Yes. No, the, <laughs> the people then used to despise his music. Wow. Because we, wow. The, the the masses were listening to um, uh, rock steady at the time, uh -huh. which, but you know, that kind of music and my parents they were listening to like, like. Uh, 
what Sam Cook and uh, yes. Fats Domino and guys like that. Yes, yes. You know the the big groups like the, the Shy Lights. Yes, and guys like those. That that those were the music that was around. Mm -hmm. And and I remember the the, the grown ups, my like my parents' uh, age group. They're saying like, what's the all this bing jang bang around going on? <laughs> they didn't appreciate it. <laughs> so anyway, we today, I can speak for my generation that today's music kind of sounds strange to me. Mm -hmm. The new beat and the new, like, you know, the, the rap music that they they speak so fast that I can't, my ears is not fast enough to listen to the lyrics that they're saying. <laughs> So I guess to my to back in those days to my parents, they were hearing that when Bob was starting with his sound, which was reggae, turning from rock steady to reggae. A lot of people didn't embrace it just right off the bat, but then it took a foothold that you know the vibes was there, the sound of the weed, and it's a groove. <laughs> it's not, it, it just make you want to smoke a split when you hear Bob's music, but you don't want to chill and cool out. <laughs> so anyway, you know, I'm glad for him. You know, I, yeah. I'm, I, I'm sorry I didn't have a picture with him from back yes. then, but I knew yes. him. Uh, on a, just uh, uh, a couple occasions I met him. So, uh, but. He himself suffered some, you know, violence. You yeah. know, they shot him, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. They didn't die, but they, they came to his house and shot him for whatever yes. reason. That story, I don't know if it's ever going to be known to people. The real, real reason why they did it. Wow. Some were saying it was political, but oh, yeah, it must have gone deeper than that. For it. Mm. They wanted to take his life. Yes. And, and he was a superstar back then, you know. Superstar, so. yes. Back then he was big, now. Yes, he was. He was the Bob Marley then. Mm -hmm. But that was my stint, you know, my little uh, <coughs> meeting with him. Well, I, I asked everybody that question: Who's of your age? You know, I mean, how close? Because I, I, I love Bob Marley, and it's, it's, you don't love Bob Marley more than me. Sorry, uh -huh. you know, I don't. I don't know about that, man. Listen, I've been to India. I saw Bob Marley posters in India, Australia, everywhere wow. in the world I went. You've seen I've, it? I've seen been in concerts? No, I saw it. I mean, it's posters. His music was oh, suddenly posters. Illustrated. Yeah. So, I mean. I know you are old, Sean, but not that old. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just talking about how the influence he's had on the world. That's what I'm talking about, man. So. Okay, okay. And I know a lot of Canadians love him too. So, George was a. Was hot back in those days. I figured the two of them have to cross paths, you know. <laughs> so, but look here in, in 80, 81, and 82, there's like one of the one of some of the best years you had riding, right? Yes, those those were the most prestigious years that I see here on, on my chart calendar because I'm a big stats guy, right? I mean, it shows in your career here in Canada, you had over eight, 800 and, and something. Um, 8,848 miles and you fit 1,395. I mean, in those days, the money had to be pretty big because it says 12 minutes, 366,379 dollars. Well, the earnings. Is that what is that? You're looking, you're are you seeing good 12, 12 million? Yeah, I wonder where my money went. <laughs> 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 My wife has a sneaking account somewhere up there. <laughs> that was career earnings, though. <laughs> Horses earnings. Well, you know, it was good money then. Yeah, it was We're good talking money. About the 80s. Yeah, what yeah. is that equivalent for today? That would be equivalent wow. to what? Like wow. with maybe 30 or some million. Maybe yeah. more. Maybe way yeah. more than yeah. that. Dollar ain't going too more. far these days. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yeah, yes. You know, that, that's that's gotta be in the eighties, eighties, about 80, 80 something million if it was in these days today. Today, uh, yeah. Come on, Darren, pull one more story out of the hat there for me, Darren. You're sleeping. Uh, You're falling asleep on me there, Darren. No, no, no. I'm actually listening because it's a it's a pleasure <laughs> to see him, man. It's been <laughs> I, me out the last here, time Darren. I saw him was when he came to get his award. 
That's the last yeah. time you've seen him. How many yeah. years ago is that? Yeah. Well, well, I my attention went, span is, My attention span is waning. So Darren, come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah there you go, Darren. Come on, <laughs> come you on, Darren. Can't us, you can't give us two stories and just leave us, Darren. <laughs> no, well, I mean, he, he, I don't know how to say it. He was just—he was a pleasure to be around, and it, it was. Uh, pretty cool because the barn I worked in for Trevor, he rode a lot of horses and he rode at the other end for Emil Elaine a lot. And uh, I, I, I don't know how to say it. He's You're just, he's, he's, a, he's a gentleman and one of the best people you'll ever meet. Keep going, keep going. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> and he's, I funny, get... he's funny as hell too, Darren. <laughs> oh, well, you know, you know what? They, they what? say, uh, um, my dad always used to say, the older you get, the uh -huh. less filter you have. Yeah. He's done more talking in this interview than probably four years back right. then. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You got him yeah, in a comfort right. zone, right? You got him in a well, comfort zone, man. No, but when you're doing business, you never yeah. want to give the other guy an edge. So you don't yeah. say anything. That's they can't right. say anything yeah. about you. He stayed yeah. Very true, Darren. Yeah. yeah. You know, you enough. never want to give the other guy an edge. Because I remember one time he's riding a really good horse for Samson. And he, like he said, he's riding everything for Lord. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went downtown um, for dinner. And he said, you know, these two horses are going to hook. And he, he looked right at my dad and said, well, if somebody got to get mad at me, I'd rather it be Jimmy Day than Lori Silver. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the way. It, but it, but it's funny how it works. Jimmy wanted to tell you what to do. Yeah. So yeah. my dad telling him now I can't ride for you. Oh man, it sent it sent him to the moon. Yeah. You're telling me no. Yeah, yeah, he says yeah. yeah. You're really gonna ride for that that guy? He says yeah. And he could. He, I'm telling you, if he could have shot my dad, he would have, because he could not believe you were turning him down. Ooh. And don't don't forget though, we had fun with Lori, but back then Lori had some serious bullets. Yeah, yeah. He had some good horses. I mean, he. Yeah, yeah. I remember one time he's he's got a, a horse named Right Son. Yeah. Right I mean, Sun. he can. He's fast. Yeah. But he's yeah, got zero scope. Morning. He can't go very far. Uh -huh. But we opened back then at Greenwood going four and a half. Yes. Yes. And every week, Lori run him, and every week he went. And it yeah, comes yeah. to the fourth week, and my dad says to him, aren't you going to give this horse a break? <laughs> and I'm telling you, he looked right at my dad and said, Tom, man, he going to get the whole summer off. <laughs> and he run every week at Greenwood. Six yeah. weeks in a row. I think he won five races. Yes, yes, and he did. True. He kicked him out because yeah. back then he had his own farm. Kicked him out for the whole summer and brought him back for Greenwood in, in the fall because he yeah. couldn't get five. Eight. And back then we didn't run five eights. Yeah. Once you left Greenwood, it was the, the shortest was three quarters. Now oh. we'll run five eights, but that horse was done. I heard Mike he couldn't Mike get three quarters in the back of a truck. Yeah. I think it was Mike yeah. Naslo and Mike Lim that told me about that horse this morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was cool. Yeah, he he was speedy. He just he had zero scope. He he, he couldn't get five eights. But he, he owned Greenwood. Yeah. What he left Jamaican? the gate like a slingshot. Yeah. <laughs> what about Jamaican Gigolo? You rode him too? Larry was great at picking those horses. Jamaican uh -huh. Gigolo and I, another one was Solar Guy. Solar Guy, yes. They used to leave the gate before it opened. <laughs> like you could ask Mike <laughs> Lim about him. Uh, one, <laughs> one spring, Larry phones my dad and says, what's the kid doing? He says, he's sitting on the end of the couch. Uh -huh. He says, well, bring him in tomorrow. <laughs> and oh. Lori brought uh, um, Jamaican Gigolo in a two-horse yeah. trailer and worked him on the training track. Uh -huh. And the only it's... two guys that saw this horse work was Mike Lim and a pucker back then named Courtney. Courtney, yeah. Lori. Yeah. And, he, yeah. and he set him up, and this horse went, and, and he paid boxer. He paid 18 or $19 you know, for a horse that shouldn't, shouldn't, I, shouldn't pay I, that much. I could not forget that morning. This is February, and it was minus five degrees with a hundred mile wind, <laughs> and we were out there like the only guys out there. The track is frozen hard because it is so cold, yes. and we are out there working horses. And I tell you, I from that 
winter. I didn't stay another winter to let Loris is there know I was there. <laughs> <laughs> I left every winter and I wouldn't come back until the middle of March. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, we got yeah, a great okay. comment here that there was a photo that won a sovereign award for photography of George Fosine on George Dinkle reading up yeah. in the winner's circle after the Canuck Cups. This was by Tom Marino. Yeah, I think that should be rearing up because yeah, it was a pretty up. famous yeah. picture. This horse was straight up in the air. Yeah. Oh, okay. And Laurie, okay. Laurie had him by the chin strap because he was pretty tall and his yes. hat kind of sideways and George was <laughs> hanging on. Oh. <laughs> I'd, I'd like to see that picture. George Dinkley. I remember the horse. Yeah. Yeah. Tom, if you got the picture, send it, man. Send it. Don't just. <laughs> it's great. Or anybody. Anybody here out there is telling it out. Actually, I think I think Tom <clears throat> made a sketch of it, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Yeah, he, he when he sits down, he's pretty good. Okay. Yeah. He does a pretty good job. Great. Our friend Jennifer Morrison would like to know what is George doing now to stay busy and looking so young. <laughs> well, I I I do exercise. I run twice a week. Uh -huh. Whenever I whenever my feet aren't hurting me because uh, I must tell you a few years back, I fell off my roof. Don't ask me what I was doing up there, please. <laughs> right? oh dear. Fell off my roof and broke my both legs, my both what? feet, five places. What? what? Right? So I was you know, in a wheelchair for like six months and I wow. did a lot of rehab. So whenever I can, I do run twice a week at a soccer field close by where I live. Yes. And I keep my, I keep in pretty active. And I have two grandkids that keep me busy. Oh. Two. I, I mean, they, I can't believe grandkids would have so much energy. <laughs> 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 and um, what is I do? I what, one question, George. I heard a rumor the other day. Do you really play in a rock band? Oh, that's a good question. Not a rock <laughs> rock band. You should say a reggae band. Aye. Okay. Aye. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I did a few. I did a few appearances, not by choice. Uh -huh. The people <laughs> didn't want me by choice. I just <laughs> ran up on the stage because my friend is a reggae star. His name is Pluto Shervington, the reggae uh -huh. star from back in Bob Marley days. Yes. And I, I, I work along with him. I do the heavy lifting for him with the equipment. I take that as my exercise. And <laughs> today I can, I can uh, hook up a band all by myself. Wow. All wow. wires, speakers, lights, everything. So you're a technical man. From, yeah, you're te yeah. You're a technical man. But sometimes I run up on the stage and I, on a slow night, and I'll be singing my... I, I don't even know if he's playing the right background to my song. I don't know. Singing. <laughs> okay, Any song. Now, now we're going to put you on the spot here now, George, because you're talking about singing. So you got to give us a note here now. Oh, hold you know? on here, man. Wait, wait, hold on. Rocket oh. Race Sovereign sent a message out, man. The Rocket Race thing, George was saying, great, great, red, honored to nominate. Wow. Rocket, you remember Rocket oh. Race? Okay, Raymond Sabore nominating yeah. me. Oh man, Ray, is he? Ray is my good friend, man. Ray, where are you? Ray Ray's a is cook, a Ray's cook, a cook now, you know. He's cook, a cook now, George. Chef. No, don't say cook. Chef. Chef. No, ah. oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, George. Sorry. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Ray is a sorry for the yes. correct. <laughs> I'm very sorry about that, Rocket Ray. Sorry, you're yeah. a chef. My sorry, sorry, Ray. Yeah. You're a chef. You're not a cook. <laughs> great, great. Yeah, I'm glad for him. I'm glad he found some. Well. I'm glad he found some. Is that him? Oh, oh no. Oh, that's a no. young lady. That's, that's, no, that's, 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 that's my wife. wife. This is Darren's wife. <laughs> that's your wife, yeah. Darren? Yeah. yeah. She's heard all them stories <laughs> before. I'm coming to Toronto. <laughs> Darren, <laughs> watch out! She is a beautiful girl. Yeah, that she she'll you, never Jerry. see a tag. <laughs> Glad to meet you. Oh, but George, God. George, you know what you can do? You can sing her note or two, George. So share that note. You can make never you, you reminisce her a little bit, George. I 
No, no, hey, I'm I swear if I try to bust a note right now, this computer is gonna shut down. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Georgie. I have no, I have no Come on, Georgie. I, I have no no formal training as a singer, right? So I so, I will just be karaoke for you and so it's similar to that? you're just a bathroom singer then. You just <laughs> went to the bath. You close your closet, guy. You want to put behind the curtains, no, eh, George? No. No, hear what happened now. Here, okay. here, this was my job at the gigs. Okay. Yeah. When 12 o'clock at night comes uh -huh. and the gig is over and the people at the bar, the drunks, they, won't, they don't want to leave. Yes. Uh -huh. Then they hand me the microphone. <laughs> And before the first song, everybody is yeah. running out of the place like this. <laughs> so you got to <laughs> and in no time <laughs> the joint is empty and we can all go home. Oh god, I saw that one coming, guys. I saw that one coming. <laughs> oh god. But you know, I, I what Darren was saying, I changed a lot, which is true. Mm -hmm. I I was 45 when I had a really serious accident at highly racetrack. Yes. Horse flipped on me and kicked me in the head, yes. knocked me yes. out cold. I was unconscious. I woke up uh, in an emergency uh, at Jackson Memorial Hospital here, trauma yes. center that was. So uh, when I when I regained consciousness and um, several surgeries to reconstruct my my jaw under here was shattered. And uh, when I was recovering, my mind was so foggy. I could hardly remember anything in the past. And um, it took months for me, for my memories to start for me to recalling stuff yes and um truly true story three four o'clock in the mornings i used to wake up with these songs in my head mm -hmm. that i guess my memory was kind of you know rebooting so i used to hear these records when i was four or five years old like a fat stamina and those kind of guys mm -hmm. and they would pop in my head out of the clear blue sky. So anyway, that this guy I'm telling you about Pluto, the reggae, the reggae star. He he is, was a neighbor of mine. He lived in my neighborhood, and he told me to come and sit with him one at a neighborhood restaurant mm -hmm. where they were playing on a Friday night. And I went there, and he was playing old songs that I used to remember. And it would just strike a chord with me and like some of my memory, some of my brains just started to click. Trigger again and, and trigger your brain a bit. Trigger my memory. Yeah. And that's where how it all started. I ran up on the stage and started singing with him. <laughs> and it is just, <laughs> then the people start laughing. They were having fun because I, I can't hold a note <laughs> to save my life. <laughs> So anyway, we became friends, and that's how Darren was asking me about. I'm a rock singer, not really rock. I'm a reggae guy, <laughs> but not, not more like a, a a roadie. They call us roadie. Yes, <laughs> right. the trucks and and build the stage and <laughs> unpack and back home. Uh, so we were getting home four or five o'clock in the morning when we used to go to work at four or five o'clock in the morning. That's when we were reaching back at home after the gigs uh, so it was like a, a turn the other way around just turn yeah. the other way around the other way around yeah yeah so anyway as i was saying uh i used to struggle with my weight when i was riding mm -hmm. and now that i stopped i you know i could eat well and i actually have gained like 30 pounds it doesn't look like like it but i was mm -hmm. like skin and bone when i was riding right so I've actually gained 30 pounds since I stopped riding. Wow. And uh, I feel much better now, healthier. And maybe that's why I'm speaking as much now, because I'm, I'm, I'm some kind of nutrition in my body. 
yes, yes. But yes. the weights were different back in those days too. You guys had to put a lot of weight yeah, more yeah. than yeah. I had to struggle. Of, it was hard on you guys back in those days. The regular weight was one fifteen, and then yeah. they go down to one ten. Yeah, that was you and guys I had was rough, struggling man. to make fifteen. Yeah, oh. and, and Laura MC Silvera. He warned me, he says, yeah. not one pound over <laughs> yeah. is, and getting a, a lighter rider. Yes. He, he told me, very big weight, on that. weight will stop trains, yeah. much <laughs> less racehorses. So he said, if you're going overweight, you're riding another horse in the race. Not, he's not going overweight. I, that has a lot to do with our, our European background especially guys coming to west indies because everybody was like that back in the islands man right yeah they they, they don't want to carry the overweight no never what i must say for michael silvera now yes. was the opposite yes he once put me on a horse with 13 pounds overweight wow the what? horse did still win wow. but it he, he didn't he didn't matter to win he ride. said, George, as long as you want to ride this horse, yes, we're going with any weight you can make. Wow, it was 13 pounds overweight, and the horse, <laughs> but that they're you know, two different outlook on racing. Uh, Michael and Laurie Silver. I remember one time Laurie told me if you carry one pound over, you don't believe in the handicapping system. Exactly. That's wow. That, that's him. That's Larry Silvera. <laughs> and then he said, "Not one pound over." Yeah. And that's what that, how Omar Moreno got his break with him too, you know, because he believed in him, you know, the, the bug rider, right? Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, he believed in a bug rider. So, so George, that's why Emil lasted so long too, because Emil, I think, at that time was tacking like, eleven or twelve. Yeah. So. Emil, yeah. He, he never first, had a problem right, with no it. Yeah. Yeah. Those guys are blessed, you know. They, those those naturally short guys are yes. they're blessed. There should be riders. Yes. Yeah. But if you would just share something with the young riders of today, George, what would it be? If you had to share okay, something. Okay. Yes. You know, Sean was, Sean and I was talking about the young riders, yes. especially the ones that, from the islands, Jamaica yes. and Barbados and so forth. Yes. Yeah. We our racing days are sparing lot. Uh, we are once still once a week in Jamaica. How much are you up to now in Sean in well, Barbados? Still, still still Jamaica, Jamaica is twice. I'll be here only once. Barbados is once a week. Yes. Yeah, so Every, it's, uh, yeah. twice yeah. a month. Sorry, twice a month. And where Jamaica is now twice a week, Wednesday and Saturday. Yes. So, so here we go. Yeah. It, it jockeys are athletes, right? And you can work and exercise horses a hundred horses in one day you can't be as fit as riding in one horse race yes a horse race is so demanding mentally and physically mm -hmm. so if we're riding once a once a week and well you might be riding five or six races for the day but it cannot compare to north america where five days a week yes and you can be riding you can be riding at night and you can be riding day yes you can finish a day and go somewhere and ride at night if the track is close enough yes and as, as athletes the fitter we are is the better we are we're sharper fitter yes. and we're more agile mm -hmm. so my advice to riders from the caribbean is if they get a chance to come to north america any recognized racetrack mm -hmm. and apply the apply their trade and just try to get some experience it's a, it's a much different scenario you know the, 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 the jockey's room is more like a hotel you know cafeteria yeah. and yeah. exercise room the the, uh, the hot box the sweat mm -hmm. box and most racetracks they have swimming pools and games room so jockeys really are you know comfortable to be spending five days a week and mostly all day but if you're a rider that exercise horses in the morning you're there for a few hours and then by the time you're ready to ride it's one o'clock twelve o'clock one o'clock in the day so mm -hmm. it's mostly spending all day at the racetrack yeah. but the experience to ride 
uh, uh, five days a week, several races a day, uh, turf, dirt, and the new synthetic uh, surface, yes. you know, can only make a rider better. Plus, they're so exposed to, to race riding, you know, to, to see themselves riding. I think in Jamaica now they have the, the uh, reruns right away to, to watch themselves ride. But not when I was there with the jockey school. Uh, ten years, I think it was about ten years ago, I did a, a jockey school yeah. uh, program, and we didn't have those equipment uh, to for the uh, the young riders to experience, like uh, the the gym and you know that exercise, the wood horse exerciser. Yes, the exerciser. Yes, exerciser. that's a very great piece of equipment. We mm -hmm. couldn't afford that, I think. And the the videos, it was hard to get to for the riders. And like the young riders, they, we didn't have a training track. Mm -hmm. Cape Spark has one track, the main track, and for a young rider to be learning, as opposed to in America where they have a a training center right for jockeys for young jockeys mm -hmm. and they go through the whole from start to finish from grooming or right up until to ride mm -hmm. the the anatomy of a racehorse yes and well i think we're kind of doing that too in jamaica now mm -hmm. what we could do with better equipment and better facilities mm -hmm. for the young riders right but bottom line is try to um, go overseas, get some exposure to foreign racing, uh, better themselves, and hopefully they can uh, make a living out of it. Some of my guys from my class, there were tw 23 riders at the time from my class, and they're gonna get licensed and there's once a week racing. What kind of chances do do they have? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, ten races for the day, and back then it was once a week and sometimes twice. Mm -hmm. The older riders aren't retiring soon enough. Yes. So only a couple uh, really had a chance to make a living. Mm -hmm. So uh, I encourage most of them to do what I was saying to you try to go overseas yes. even if they didn't get a chance to race ride there's a good living in galloping horses yes. in the morning yes. and i've i've actually seen quite a few of them here at goldstream park mm -hmm. uh galloping horses in the morning and making a good living mm -hmm. which they couldn't have done yes. back home in jamaica right. Right. so it is solid advice for a young rider to try to go overseas and get some experience yes. so in a in a nutshell that is what my advice is to young riders we preach that here every, every, every however we can i'm so happy to to get your back in on that you know because yes every one of us sitting here today have been overseas leroy is still in canada brett road in canada I worked in Canada and trained in Canada. I worked with Laurie Severe, then I trained. So it, for me, I'm back home now, but I still would like to see some more of our guys go out. Um, I well, a lot work. about the, our show, Sean, is to try to motivate the youngsters yes. to learn from yes. experienced horsemen like George Hosang, yourself, Leroy yes. Darren, the sport. We want to encourage our youth to take the chance, Ooh. learn, the chance. step up to the plate, and and broaden your horizons i mean we've got a btmi racing report coming up where we have jockeys in west virginia alberta vancouver toronto throughout new york florida like we're really growing and we just want to continue that growth and the thing about it is right george barbinian writers we come from that little bush track there six long to small but so writers good. come from the garrison and do well in, in the international field and it's amazing i think it's i i don't know how to explain why it happens but i think it's the track itself teaches you a skill of balance and 
and yeah. you know, just being we're all like sardines going on that part of band together you have to go around in unison you can't cut off a guy or nothing like that and they all each generation have done it well so i i speak i, I mean when we spoke to jim bannon i always remember what jim bannon said he said once you write at the garrison it's guaranteed that you have really you know i mean you've done what you can write to. anywhere yes you can write anywhere in the world man in and the world yes our guys are showing that you know maybe ricky griffith would have been the first body who made it in in um a woodbine but we had guys like winston walton who would have gone there before ricky i think i don't know if winston was there when he were there for the brief time he was there but ricky's body who really broke broke through you know what i mean and his brother yeah, chris followed him you. soon afterwards and mm. went to Fort Erie, and he was a champion down there multiple times so we keep preaching that man we keep and, and this is not a Barbados thing anymore. It's a West Indian thing, you know. We're all connected to one another, and we, we want to keep on all our writers, Trinidad, Jamaica, wherever. Keep fighting, guys. So George was one the, the only Jamaican writer to win a title at Woodbine, right? Yes. I as a from Jamaican. What I can recall, yes. yes. Yeah. And then yes. Trinidad it was Emil. Yes. Ramsami. Emil Ramsami, yes. Yeah, those were from Trinidad and Jamaica. George, you, look who's look who's on the line there, Mrs. Silvera, man. Oh Claudia. yes, yes, Claudia. Yes. Wow. yes. Oh goodness, I wonderful good seeing you, George. Is, great so show. Great, George, look great wonderful. Lady. She called me last night. She told me she was so excited to hear you were on, and, and she's great still on. Lady. Watch it. <laughs> great, great lady. She and her daughter. Uh, yes. They are. Her, her, well, Claudia. Yeah. Claudia. Yeah. Claudia. 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 Claudia is her daughter. Yeah. That's right. Claudia. And yes. Claudia worked at the track, I think, but all the other daughters that weren't really tracky. They, were, they didn't really come to the garden, but I, I met her all of them since. But and she was my Carl. Shout. A big shout Carl? out to you, Miss Claudia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure God. she's watching too. <laughs> and the whole yes. family, because he had a, uh, uh, what is on, Name rather Arthur. screening. Arthur. 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 Arthur, yeah. Yes. Arthur was a trainer too. Yeah. Yes, yes. So you remember, it, you remember Peter Silvera too? Of Peter. Peter Peter Silvera. That yes. was his yes. nephew. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. yes. I haven't yes. seen him this year. I haven't seen him this year at all. I don't know if he's not well or something like that, but I haven't seen I, him this year at the track. You know what? He friended me on Facebook early this year. So I know I know he's on. You know, he friended me and stuff. But I he was there all last. Him. He was there all last year, but I haven't seen him this year yet. And but now he told me, so I gotta shout him out. And I gotta give him. A, I gotta give yeah. him a message and see what's going on. Because all last year he was there at the track with Rodney when Rodney mm -hmm. was training a lot of those horses that yes. Spirit had. But this yes. year I haven't seen him this year so far, so I don't know if he's not well or what. Yes. Yeah, and no, I don't man, think... this show. This show is a great show, man. I'm so happy that um, wow, people loving it. Yes. <laughs> it's, oh. it's the best show ever. <laughs> so gentlemen is it past yes. midnight where you are at no, not, no. Yet. not yet not yet not we're yet. we're gonna let you go get yet. get your 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 beauty sleep george yeah. <laughs> no I, I told sean i had to skip dinner this, this show went right into my dinner time uh -oh. i didn't want to be eating on the show so <laughs> okay all right well george, that's I, it. I i i didn't think you i didn't think you told me your attention span is not very much there and like you're You've gone more than we expected, man. <laughs> this is not really me you're talking to. Well, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. It's well, a new synthetic well, you know, George Cole it, sign. It was a pleasure talking yes. and meeting you, Brett. Lee Rod, yes. Thank you sir. very much. Just, Thank you. Yeah, uh, I just met Sean a couple weeks ago and yes. my good lifetime friend, Darren. Darren. Yes. It's I'm great to see you. See you. I'm coming up there one summer to see you and meet I'll be here. Okay. It's been a okay, pleasure. Guys. Thank right, you. Guys. Very, very and in the winter, I'll make my way to see you where it's warm. <laughs> Come on down, man. <laughs> okay. Come in the winter time. When yeah. The winter break, yeah. Yeah. He's still busy to leave now. Okay, I'll Sean, you sign off, Sean. Sean, we leave this up for you to sign off, Sean. George? It's been a pleasure. This is, I mean, because 
of my affiliation with Lori Severa when I went there in 89, you left in 86. They were still talking about you. So that's all I used to hear about in his barn. And for me to finally meet you, talk to you like this in this arena here right now, it's it's heaven. I I yeah. I, I really appreciate you doing this show for us, man. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, very you much. Sam. I appreciate it, man. And I'm so proud that I made an impression that you can still remember me. Yes. We will we'll never forget you, sir. Yes. You will never be forgotten. And I'm when I do shows like this. That's why I'm doing shows like this. I'm making sure that guys like you who paved the way for many of us Palestinians. Yes, yes. But never yes. ever be forgotten. Amen to that. Amen to that. Never ever, sir. Amen to we that. We record a history. Yes. yes, sir. Amen to that. Okay. All right. Well, so you go much. get yourself something to eat before you know you you get bad feels that we were saying the West Indies. <laughs> Our little ear starts to hit you in the wrong places. <laughs> it's called gas, right? Yes. <laughs> Flatulence. Okay. All right. Well, thanks again. All right, guys. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great seeing right. you, George. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. All right, guys. Wow. What a that, that's a warm moment, better, huh? Yes. Jesus, yes. I mean, wow. I, I don't know what to say. And how are we going to beat that now, Sean? I don't know how we can beat that. How are we going to beat that? <laughs> the great, the George, great George was saying. And he, he was. You I know what I love the he most? Was like too much, he was he relaxed. Was Yes. He was enjoying yes. the show himself. Yes. Thank yes. you, Mr. Yes. Hosang. I mean, yes. Yes. that was the success of this show where we're yes. recording history here. Yes. Yes. And I'm glad you said it, Sean. You're putting them down in the history books, and we're making sure those history books don't go hidden. Yes. yes. And I'm all so happy, know. man. I'm, this, yes. this is a great night, guys. I, I thank you guys for also, I mean, I don't know. I know I get the points, and I'm speechless, guys. So let's <laughs> let's, let's, let's Let's go to the next. Day. We got some guys waiting to come waiting, in. Waiting, waiting. Go keep All those right. guys waiting. Bring well, those guys in. Bring those let's guys hear in. Show us from a few yet, of our sponsors, and we will get back up to it. Yes. is the BTMI Weekly Report. Report. Our BTMI Weekly Report updates you on Barbadian jockeys, trainers, and horsemen who work throughout North America, the UK, and all other parts of the world. First off, we want to congratulate Barbadian trainer Carlos Grant, who won race number 10 at Woodbine Racetrack on Sunday, May 22nd. When Jack, Ridden by Luis Contreras, finished first by one and three quarter lengths. This was the first runner of the year for Carlos at Woodbine. Congratulations to Barbadian and Jamaican trainer Nigel Burke, who has run six horses for the year and now has three winners. That's a 50% win average. I'm pretty sure any trainer would love to keep those high percentages. Nigel actually won a hat trick as he won his last three races on May 12th, 13th, and May 20th. Keep up the great work, Nigel and his team. Congratulations also goes to trainer Safi Joseph Jr., who has already won 65 races throughout North America in 2022. He has had 304 runners for the year at 11 racetracks, such as Gulfstream Park, Churchill Downs, Pimlico, Horseshoe, Indianapolis, Belmont Park, Woodbine, Keenan, Aqueduct, Tampa Bay Downs, Fairgrounds, and even Maiden Racecourse in Dubai, the United Arab Emirates. On May 21st, Mr. Joseph won the second race at Gulfstream Park with Positive Review, who finished first by seven and a half lengths and was ridden by Alyssa Morrison. On that same day, Safi Joseph returned with another runner in race seven 
and one with Anna's Dream by one and a quarter lengths. And then again on May 22nd, Hrothgar finished first by one and a quarter lengths and was ridden by Miguel Vasquez. Creative Cloud won a claiming race on May 20th at Gulfstream Park and the day before, Mr. Safi Joseph Jr. won with She's All Woman, ridden to victory by Edwin Gonzalez. The Safi Joseph trained Skippy Longstocking ran a credible fifth in the Preakness Stakes on May 21st. Congratulations to the Safi Joseph racing team. Keep up the great work. Congratulations are also sent out to Barbadian jockey Jalon Samuel who rode on May 22nd at Monmouth Park and won aboard Diva Banker, who finished first by two and three quarter lengths in a starter optional claiming event. Deshaun Bino won race one at Century Mile Racetrack and Casino in Leduc County, Alberta, next to the Edmonton International Airport on sports car by three quarters of a length. This is his first win for the year. Where to go, Deshaun? Rico Walcott won race number four by a half a length at Century Mile Racetrack and Casino on Kiki Kimono, his third winner for 2022. Rico also won with All That Gold, who finished first by 11 and three quarter lengths on May 22nd. Now we head to Woodbine, where on May 21st, 2022, we showed you a video, or we will show you a video in the upcoming Slade Jones weighing in for his first race at Woodbine Racetrack. He finished on place on this his first mount and on his second mount the next day. I believe he had a ride today and finished third in his race. So we wish him all the best and good luck in the future. We missed. Patrick Husband's happy birthday on May 22nd. So we would like to wish him a happy belated birthday to Patrick Bowman Husbands. Patrick Husbands is now the second Bajan rider to win a stakes race in North America this year after winning his second stakes at Woodbine, taking the $100,000 Ruling Angel stakes on summertime on Saturday, May 21st. Patrick has now won seven races at Woodbine Racetrack out of only 25 starts, giving him a solid 28% win average. Patrick also won the $100,000 Ruling Stakes on Summertime Magic aboard Talbia, bred in Ireland, who finished first by three lengths. Steve Jadu, a Trinidadian jockey, won race two at Woodbine on May 20th, tall water, and finished first by a neck for trainer Beverly Chubb. Over in Charlestown on May 20th, Kimar Trotman moved up to 13 wins this year. Kimar Trotman won on Dealer's Girl on May 20th at Charlestown Racetrack, which is just outside the eastern city limits of Charlestown, West Virginia owned by Gaming and Leisure Properties, operated by Penn National Gaming. May 21st, Rashawn Latchman, Barbadian, Rashawn Latchman wins the $75,000 It's Been Too Long stakes on Silky Serena at Charlestown Racecourse. This is his 31st winner of the year in the United States. On Wednesday, May 25th, Rashawn Latchman also won on Epic Time by a neck for trainer Christopher Cole, increasing his win total to 32 winners for the year. Rocco Bowen won race number two at Hawthorne with Stars Over Paradise on May 20th, bringing his total to 27 wins in the USA for 2022. My brother, Slade Callahan, at 51 years old, has also begun his 2022 racing meet at Woodbine Racetrack with two rides last Saturday for his wife, Kelly Callahan. But although they didn't get any higher than fourth place, I loved how his horse, Komodo Kate, galloped out. I'm going to keep an eye on him, and she will be my pick of the week next time she runs. 
And moving over the pond to the UK, we have the Kazoo Derby on June 4th, where Barbadian trainer Sir Michael Stout is chasing his sixth win with Desert Crown. This is 41 years after he first won the Epsom Downs Classic with the mighty Shergar. Weekly report. Report. Hey guys, did well, I miss any riders, trainers, jockeys, listen, grooms? Listen, you took that took about twenty minutes to read. Is it that so much Barbadians are doing well all over the place? <laughs> wow. hey, if the guys are still gonna do great. We're gonna applaud them and give them kudos. Cheers to all Barbadians, Trinidadians, Jamaicans, yes. all of them. But Way to go. Yes. The BDMI yes. report. Is no, it we can need a horse show to do that. <laughs> wow. that right. But you know what's more exciting, Sean? Tell me. We got a secret coming up that we're going to disclose now. All right. Sean secrets. Hall and Leroy Trotman Let's Journeys, go. the talk show, are yes. now introducing to you Chris Griffith and Tyler Gaskin, our new racing correspondents yes. from oh, Ordinary right. Racetrack and Woodbine. I'm well, wearing my ordinary hat, too. <laughs> I'm wearing my ordinary hat. Yeah, y'all yeah, 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 are about to tune in to me sleeping here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, we're about to tune in to me sleeping here. Brett, you know, Tyler, I was like, somebody wake up, Tyler. Yeah, yeah, I said. Hey, uh, Brett, you know, you just let down a whole lot of people. You talk about this secret that you got to release. <laughs> you just, you just let down a whole audience. You can hear them all strips at the same time. Don't let them know that you got to release the secret. Don't let them know that you got to release the secret. Sean, Leroy, and I knew you guys offered to help us out. So thank you. But you all offered to help us out. A week or two ago so yes it was a secret and we kept that secret close to our chest for two weeks i, I listen when i agreed to help you i didn't know it was it would mean that i had to be up till 10 o'clock at night <laughs> <laughs> i didn't see that i didn't see that in the contract this is <laughs> running two hours and 53 minutes sean yes but, but guess what Right and Chris don't know we stay here for another hour or two. No, do <laughs> that, that, that is gonna be late tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Listen, this is something called growth. Okay. This this journey's talk show is growing in statue. We are expanding. I'm very grateful to get the help from you two guys to 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 Give us that extra arms out there to, to get some videos and talk to people and that kind of stuff. I've seen your work already. I'm very impressed and I'm, I'm looking forward to what more you guys are going to bring in the future. I'm going yes. re to record that part of the show, that speech you just gave, because when I say my bill, I hope you still want <laughs> I, I don't care how much the bill is. I'm, my mouth is still going to be sweet on you guys. <laughs> hey, listen, I don't care, man. Seriously, though, that, that interview with Hosang was brilliant. Yeah, yes. that, that was great. That was, that yes, was real. That talks that, I got nothing yeah. else, guys. So, huh? so, so Laura told me one day, he said, you remind me of Hosang, because when he first started, I said, he have no shot. He have no <laughs> shot. Same thing I said when you start and wave your bug, you have no <laughs> shot. <laughs> said, you, like Hosang, you proved me wrong. He said, you have no shot. So Laura, you remember, it's the Lord tie you straight, boy. Yes. Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> don't pull no punches. No, man, but... Hey, listen. I tell you a quick story about my only Hoasang story. Yes. And it involves Sir Lori. I, I think it was 97 or something like that. Yes. They want they had this jockey challenge in Jamaica. Yes. And they was having a team of overseas based West Indians. Yes. And Laurie asked me if I wanted to go. I said, I, I didn't really want to go. 
and he said, Chris, you know, you're gonna be in a team with Hoa Sang. As soon as he said Hoa Sang name, I start thinking, well, this is free money. I go on his team, I go to Jamaica, I know they can give him all the good horses, all that go back and collect the money. Yeah. Long story short, when I get to Jamaica, the Jamaica riders had all the good horses. <laughs> Me and Hoa Sang was riding some donkey. <laughs> did you, did you at least get, I thought I was going on to get free free money off of Hoa Sang. Did you at least get a police escort? It, no, I didn't have to get a police escort. <laughs> but I, one thing I would tell you, I know that the, the, the draw for who's supposed to ride who was supposed to be random. I said that was random my behind. <laughs> when they <laughs> want this, when they want this, listen, the first race we rode, uh-huh. I I in the back and I looking up to see where Horse Sang is. <laughs> if he get any any points, if he get any, any money. Yeah, I can't find it. When I look back, he behind me. <laughs> this ain't going as planned at all. <laughs> I don't think I don't think me nor him hit the board. Oh, no. wow. That's a great one, man. That's a great one. He was really good. I didn't, I didn't know he was that funny. Wow. Yeah, like, I, thought, I thought he was gonna be so quiet, man. Yeah, because I man. always I, I, everybody always say how quiet he is. It was yeah. surprising me. Uh, but you guys, you, you guys say we don't know how long Georgie would talk. You you yeah. give an I you give an island man a stage, any island man, you know he's gonna talk. <laughs> man, gonna talk That's man. good you know, advice. <laughs> any island man gonna talk. You know that. Yeah. I was so nervous that I thought we were just gonna get an all out of him. You know, he told me, he said, you know, Sean, I get kind of I lose thing very quickly. I don't interest you know i said lord have mercy so i started thinking of all these ideas i brought darren I, you know all these kind of stuff of i got i thought my friend chris martin to try to to give me some things and chris give me all of these i don't think we really have the news of a no, story no. for chris man sorry chris but i mean <laughs> george took the stage and took it in his direction and well tyler and chris you all might have seen me behind the scenes backstage leroy don't forget to introduce darren yeah, so yeah. To introduce Darren. About <laughs> twenty minutes later, the guys we still talking, but don't forget to introduce Darren. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, like, I, I got it bit by Harry with him out my stats and everything. <laughs> I'm sure your best friend, Chris Griffith. Yes. Again, tired. Yeah, you, you all still want Tyler and I on the show tonight. <laughs> Chris, that was you. Chris, Brett, are you longer asleep? This is right. Brett tell me, you know, Brett like to have everything in order. Brett said, yeah. be ready by eight o'clock. We, we yeah. need to be yeah. time, eight thirty. I tried wondering, if, I had to look back at the email and say, be eight a.m. <laughs> 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 Man, tell me eight o'clock. Yeah. 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 You wouldn't catch me like this here. Look, I was like this here. <laughs> I know you guys got to get up early in the morning and stuff, so guys. I, yeah. I just told but, my boss, I just told my boss I'm going to be late, so be good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, but what <laughs> Tyler? I mean, Leroy. I mean, Leroy. <laughs> your, Leroy, your boss. <laughs> yeah, one of my bosses, yeah, Leroy. <laughs> well, Tyler, <laughs> yes, sir. introduce to us this little video that you submitted, your first piece that we're going to publish right now for everyone to see. Well, just uh, uh, the start of Slade Jones's early young career at Woodbine. Uh, just took a little quick couple videos, you know, uh, for a memory for him to yeah. send to his mother and to give to you guys to uh, show the people a little bit what it's like before jocks yeah. get ready and go, first ride. go out to yeah. ride. Yeah. And Let's take brilliant. a quick look. This historic moment. Absolutely. Yeah, that's Joey, though. Please. Thanks, Mark. I just sent Dave back in the room. Thank you. Paul, Bad Jenny. And there it is. It's historic for him, not me. Oh, okay, gotcha. Getting ready for the first ride at Woodbine. Mr. Slade Jones. Sitting next to. Kazushi Kamura and Daisuke Fukimoto. Lady Joe. Hey, 
Excellent piece in that videos yeah. together, man. Great yeah. job. Yeah. Yeah. Very important when he got on the scale, he was at 17 point. You can see it, you can see he, he, he's tall, but he's light. He, he's light, 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 yeah. light. Very important, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's great, man. You got that. You awesome. send that. Send that to his mother so she could see his first, right? You know, just yeah. yeah. She, she keep everybody in touch. She's got it. I think, I think yeah. everybody on this, everybody on this show right now was like when we were sixteen too. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a stair light. <laughs> yeah. 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 You can see blowing up. It's in his. It's in his family. If if it, seeing his father here with him now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. John got a hell of a handshake now, boy. He's a little shake my hand the other day. I said, hey, man, I got a little shake. Yeah. 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 Jennifer Morrison, great team we got there, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. You guys work hard on the show. Well done. Thank you for including me. Thank you for having coming and supporting us too, Jen. Thank you. Listen, Jen is a, a is a I mean she's a big, she's a big one. Team, I just say player, back and forth. We, we need I'm so it's a joy, it's an honor to have somebody her two times so. sovereign award winning. Three, three times. Three or two. Three. Come okay. on, don't steer off for that one, man. <laughs> <laughs> Three times sovereign award winner. And you know, that's awesome. It's an honor to have her on the show. And I, I really thank her for, for dressing us with her presence. Thank you, Jane. Next. There's Peter. Yeah. Chris, what are you doing Thanks, in the morning, Daddy. though, Chris? Me? <laughs> yeah. I still get on the horses in the morning. Still get on the horses too. Yeah, yeah, good, yeah. good, good. Still staying in shape. Yeah. yeah. You've been staying young. Trying to, but I don't know it's working. <laughs> I'm, I'm Brett. I, I got, I got some news here. You forgot one writer. Chris Husband's won the first today, so Chris, yes, sorry for missing you. Well, Kevin, went today, Kevin, Kevin went today too. Kevin, Kevin went today too. Kevin went today too. Yeah, people are buying one, right? I did one there. Well, man, we won two. Yes. All right, well, okay. I was tabulating my racing report for yesterday. Yes. So well, forgive me, guys. <laughs> Sorry, I, I sent those messages to you as, and I was laughing as a joke, but I, I thought you wrote them down, but you didn't. So that's my Chris, also. Yeah. Chris, I yeah. tell Sean, I said, Sean, get me all the videos by 6 p.m. Wednesday night. I oh, get things at two o'clock, three o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> and I got two hours pages. before the show. But we, only, yeah. we only get Sorry. the call this afternoon around four. You could be on the show. Well, <laughs> yeah. that doesn't work, but I'll try. That's how we roll. I know we've been talking all right now. So that's why I, 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 my vision, my vision is, you know, I can see what's going to be like. Yeah, as, it, as it comes to you, it's yes. just yes. Yes. at you. Western, I, I, I Western Indian style, man. Yeah. Well, yeah. here's one, Chris Griffith, your contribution to the Journey Show. Everyone heard of one Crawford from Barbados? Let's Wait, catch up and see what he's been doing. Journey. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with jockey Juan Crawford, fellow Barbadian, who's also made his way to Canada. Juan's going to give us a quick summary of his journey into horse racing. So one, how did you get into horse racing? Like, how did you did you always want to become a jockey? How how did you well, end up at the track? Yeah, from from younger growing up, um, I've been watching Let's Go to the Races, and that'd been on Thursday night. Oh yes, in Let's Barbados, Go, yeah, yeah, in Barbados, and uh, I got fascinated with the horse racing. Um, one of the riders called him Eddie Maple. You yes. know, excitement to see him like they were always say Eddie Maple, uh, between horses, splitting horses. You know, that was like a thrill, excitement, and then by the time I got like 13 years old, the um, turf club there were looking for uh, a fresh set of riders, so they had the, um, the riding school. Oh yes, the jockey school. Yeah, yeah, so I applied and I got through and spent um, what they call a crash course, because we only had six months to achieve all of the basic knowledge we need to learn with the horses and everything, so and that would have been like 94 so I started riding then won my first race in 95 and then had two years with just running seconds not winning a race and then um, started back winning and 
97 then by 1998 won my first writing title at home first I, writing title in yeah I, I was still still an apprentice still at the apprentice. time so I won both championships then so you were leading apprentice and leading and writer. leading writer okay. and then um, 99 had um, leading apprentice again in 2000 leading apprentice again and from there um, went on to win two more open writing titles because then my um, apprenticeship was Which finished. Was so you won two more titles as yes, a, as yes, a after that and journeyman. Yes, uh, okay. then along with all of the state races I won at home. The only one that I didn't um, didn't won was the Gold Cup, but all of the other state races I won. Yeah, sure. yeah and then they had an opportunity to come to Canada and they was looking for riders for out west. Uh, originally, the first time out it, west, uh, at Winnipeg or well, the first time it was Northlands. Or not uh, Alberta. Uh, okay. Alberta. Okay. I, and that's when, um, well, I didn't went that first time. It would have been Quincy Welch and all of those, okay, those left and right. Yeah. yeah. So then in 2002, I went to Winnipeg in Manitoba then because they needed riders and I got the opportunity. Went there to ride. You know, um, it was a, a rough time in Manitoba. You know, I was doing really good. You know, as a, a fresh rider there, yeah, I would have been like sitting at one point. I was in second, then I was leading his standings. Had an altercation with another rider and um, pulled my license on me. Originally, they weren't supposed to, but the politics of it, they still yeah, pulled my license. Yeah. And also, I sat almost three months without being able to ride. So I went from being uh, leading at the time. And I only got to ride the last like week uh, last week of races, and still ran second. You still ended up second. Yeah, in still ended up oh, second wow. in the standings. Yeah, they had a, a to really hunt me down to get by to me get then. By, yeah. yeah, so uh, that year, I guess uh, I won forty five, but I only got to actually ride uh, about half of the season. Oh, okay. And from there, then I went back there um, in two thousand and three. Um, then I, I was away from there for for a few years because I went back to Barbados right then. They were giving me trouble oh, with my so license. You, after Winnipeg, you went, you went yeah, back to Yeah, I went back to well. Barbados because okay. they, they were giving me trouble. They want to give me back my license to ride. You know, all political, nothing to do with um, me being able to ride or anything. Okay. You know, yeah, just and there. then you were still, back then you were still on a work permit too, right? Yeah. Okay. Back so that then, makes it tougher, yeah. Yeah, made it much tougher. So I went back to Barbados and I was riding. Um, been, I ended up been in like two more championships at, at the time there. Did well, you know, because I was riding a contract for um, most of the bigger outfits there. Okay. And then after a while, uh, I had my um, my landing for Canada. You got your residency for Canada. Yeah, so, so that's when you came back. Yeah, but I still was riding in Barbados for a while. But then the immigration was like, no, you gotta show up because then you can't be in Barbados and not in Canada. You need to come and activate. Yes, you know. Yeah, so okay. I decided, all right, the, myself and the family, we decided to come back to Canada, and I went back to Winnipeg in 2010, and Patrick husbands. He left Woodbine and he came to Winnipeg because he mentioned it before. Um, please do not go back to Winnipeg. They're just killing your career and the, you're wasting your talent there. Yeah. So he said, well, he, uh, he'll organize something for me um, with his brother here in Fort Erie, yeah. um, which is um, Anthony, Anthony Husbands. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, at the end of the meet in 2011, uh, I came to Fort Erie and finished up. The last portion of the season and went to Woodbine at the end of that year. So from there, it was um, 2012. I started Fort Erie full time. Okay, so, and you've been in Ontario yeah, since, since, ever then, since yeah, then? Yeah, never went back over to Manitoba or anything. So so I know um, two years ago you were leading rider in Fort Erie, right? Yes. And then last year you got off to a slow start because you, didn't, you missed some of the yeah, days at the beginning. Yeah, missed the first four days on suspension. And okay, so end up running second in the end. So, what are your plans for this year? Are you planning splitting time between both tracks? Yeah. Or you focus well, I, I, my focus always on wherever I am. Wherever you know, are, I, yes. I always gonna give it my all. Like now, I have a, a even start with the other riders in Fort yes. Erie. You know, I had an even start with the riders in Woodbine. 
So uh, I just utilized. And you got off to a good start. So yes. you went about four or five wins. Yes, already, I right? have four wins so far okay. and, and, and Woodbine and for theory my goal would always be to win championships wherever I go you know all right so you're letting the people know right yeah, now that's right? my mission I yeah. spoke to Kirk earlier and Kirk told me the same thing Kirk yeah said he, he's well, going down the gauntlet so yeah so I, I'm pleased with that because the more challengers that the I have better, yeah, yeah, yeah the more the better, better. <laughs> yeah the better riders I'm a most all right it, like, so we can we can look forward to some serious yes riding this year. yeah some serious riding straight off the bat get the horses and get the job done all right well best of luck to you all right, thank you thanks for doing the interview and and Anytime. To the people in Journeyland, this is Juan Crawford, and you can look out for him at Woodbine and Fort Erie. Look for him in the winner's circle. Yes. All right. Peace. All right. Thank you. All right. Tyler, we are cut. I tell you, watching that video, John, you got you. Hey, listen, I, 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 no, when I mentioned, no, no, when I mentioned my state, you like my state of the art studio or what? Oh, yeah, 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 First class, right. well seated. Okay. It's well seated too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, can, I, can, I, can I can interview two, three people at a time. <laughs> <laughs> all, Griff, all I was thinking was, how much does that cost to fill up with gas? <laughs> well, you know, you know that it, I, live in, I live in Fordery. Fordery is small. I don't go yeah. far. <laughs> you don't have to go far. You don't have to go far. You don't have to drive to Woodbine. <laughs> well, that, one thing I can say though, one thing I can last me a week. Yeah. Serious note with this guy, Juan Crawford. I mean, I read up on him online, and he really got a real raw deal. He took him to court. He actually won. And oh yeah, he, yeah. He, I, you know, I, we, we, I tried to just do a what, what was that deal? His, thing, his story, but he went through some stuff. He, he yeah. get, he got a raw deal. You know, he, yeah. you know, he, he was one of the. I think he was one of the first guys that really went out to Winnipeg. Yeah, it wasn't really a. Uh, easy it was a friendly. It was a yeah, friendly place. It was not friendly to say the least. <laughs> yes. So, wow. so he he I, have he have quite you know everybody have a story. Every yes. writer have a story and yes, he got quite the story too. But so. I, I I read about his story online, man. He went court and he he won the kiss. I mean, yeah, yeah, he yeah he you know he was uh he was definitely done wrong. Yeah. With what happened out out there anyway. And not only that though, um, some depressed really. No, really was in his favor and our and, and best in the writers they were saying that these guys came back came to this track with a lot of these old guys who are, have gone on a little longer than they should have and these guys are writing bring a new style of writing that's what i said the reporter said new style of writing you know they're really aggressive that they, they, they you know because you know barbie's accustomed to these small tracks already because we yeah. write Carson, so we we know the right kind of titan but I don't think they wanted that. Yeah, he, he, he would have to tell. He would have to give you the details himself. Yes, I, I read the story. I read it, and I, I got a kind of idea where I'm glad he touched the bed. And you no, know, one of these days we have to do a story him to. to get, yeah, yeah, that, that's why I, told him. I said save the save the details for another time. Yes, yes, well, yes great. Let's, right, just, let's, let's make sure that we're not bringing it on too early to kill his career neither too, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Every, you know, we no, don't want to do that at the same time, right? <laughs> Yeah, you know Manitoba. I mean? We're talking Manitoba stuff. He seems to be at home. I know, at, but at sometimes wherever it goes, sometimes people take it the wrong way too, right? And you yeah. know how our luck is, right, guys? You don't want to yeah. poison anybody's career. Like we were exactly. talking, Sean, about Leroy. You don't want to jeopardize yeah. anyone's you gotta, career. You've got to be very smart about that, right? I, I can but, tell you, I, I went out to Calgary when Jamar, Quincy, uh, I think Trotty was with them. The first ones to go out to Calgary. Yeah, and Desmond Bryant was the other one. And yeah, I can yeah. tell you, in Calgary, it, it wasn't accepted very well at all. I mean, there were things in the jocks room that I, I ain't gonna repeat the words. Y'all yeah, can yeah. guess what they are. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, we were just we were just sixteen and seventeen, and it was four. I mean, I out there, I was a you know, I I was dark, and yeah. it was four of us and the all these men that just didn't want us there. Yeah, yeah. And and it was I, I, I can. And I mean, this is before they all had dreads and stuff. So Crawford going out there as a dread. Yeah, uh, yeah, his. Yeah. He would. Uh, he would have been definitely been a standout. Yeah, it's a yeah. different, yeah. different scenario. Yeah. yeah. So we gotta be very wow. careful before we push on that. That you know, 
But I mean, Chrissy, you were right into when you went. You had to go through some stuff yourself, although you weren't at dreads and stuff like that too. So I still you know, trying to grow dreads now, but you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. <laughs> Don't get no longer. Bring back the Jerry crow, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, All right, no, guys. You know, when, when it came to Ontario, was it? It wasn't too bad. Yeah. Um. You know, there was. There's always gonna be some stuff, but I tell you what. I mean. When we started primarily, I guess that I mean between Fordery and Woodbine. Yeah. I know myself nor Ricky. We if you're gonna say it, you better say it behind our back. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. ain't gonna tolerate that shit. No, yeah. no. no. Yeah, we, there, yeah. there was no we didn't have no toleration for that yeah. at all. So yeah. But all in all, Canada has been good for us, yeah. Barbados. Yeah. They I'm allowed so us to grow. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, like, we've met like, a okay, lot of Canadians and yeah. overseas people Let's along the road up. and journeys, and yes. they've become our friends, allies. Uh, yes, yes. Nine, 98% of the us. people, ninety-eight percent of the people I've met in Canada have been very good. Yeah, be great. Yeah, uh, we all know who the, we all know who the two percent are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at what Marcus Murray says. He loves it. Loves it. He loves it. He loves it most. The motivation and knowledgeable show. God bless you guys. Yeah, I but love I love it. Marcus. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. does he love it? And then <laughs> that, is, Chris. that is Jazzy, our feed guy, man, food guy, the food man. So oh, my, God. God. my, my boy him. Sylvester. So we yes. just, oh, all the old people staying up late tonight. <laughs> 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 yes, I've heard it. Uh, but Leroy. Yeah. Leroy. Yeah. Who's yeah. coming into your show? Oh, there's my little man, man. Yes, yes, oh, yes. Is that 11-year-old kid? Yes, yes that's him, man. Kid. <laughs> he, 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 he could build four to stay up. He up. <laughs> Great kid, though, man. Great kid. Yes. Yes. Oh, that's Vernon, my story. guy, man. Leroy, that's his first post. I got about five more posts on your little guy. Oh, yeah? Sending us notes along the way. Yeah, so I'm just going through from the top to bottom now. We'll yeah. Give a shout out to all of our followers, making sure everyone goes on to our YouTube page. Follow yes. us, like us, make sure and subscribe. We want to get our user base up um, to help keep promoting our West Indian horsemen. All right. That's right. My guy, Azarian Bisfam, your guy, Leroy, is saying that we need a team of Rashid, Rashid Hughes, Anderson Trotman, Ricky Walcott. This is before Chris He's and Chris the team. and Tyler yeah, came on, the team, man. but um, we're trying to get the Barbados Turf Club together to get a Kings versus Queens Jockeys Championship, He's champion of champions, and we're going to invite Emma and Chantel. So <laughs> trying, here's I mean, hoping. You trying to tell me to come retirement now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chris, hey, no, retired right jockeys. <laughs> we got to get Tyler to pull his weight down too. No, that ain't happening. Are you going to have a Kings versus Queen without one of the original Kings? Uh, you you, know? <laughs> you got to get back, Griff. All right. I, That's your mark. I, I'm going to start on the treadmill tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Well, look, he's picking the girls' right? Look, he's got the... Now he's picked the girls' team for us. Yeah. <laughs> this kid wow. is pretty knowledgeable, man. We got to meet this kid, Sean. Yes, yes. You got to bring one to show you mean. Yeah. Yeah, we want to see this the guy. Man. I finish it off, it would be ideal. Yeah, yeah it would be I ideal. Mean, <laughs> you're sure he's 11 years old, man? Man, man we can try. 11, so I, I believe he's 11. I think, time, I think but... he's older than 11 years old, man. And I, 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 I'm I, going with what he says. <laughs> well, you better do I think he's a man of his word, Leroy. Good evening yeah. from Sherry Gomez. Yes, Sherry, how are you there? <laughs> Jennifer Morrison, great story and video. Yes. Great footage of George. Thanks. Thank you. She gives us All a right, laugh guys, out it's, loud. It's getting late, and Tyler's getting real tired. I don't want him late in the morning because he's got some good horses uh, got to get on. I want to yeah, get yeah. in trouble for him, okay? Not yet, no, man. Man. Let's get him to but bed. Keith, this is one of the men that really think Keith Pollard, he was one of the pages who already started ball rolling, man. Good night, Keith. Yeah, Keith was up here early. Yes. Yes. Yes, oh, right. I'm, uh, I'm so happy. I know, to I know you all yeah, just don't like to say good night, but I, I, yes. I know Tyler half asleep, and I go in. Good, I'm good. Yeah. I'm so good. <laughs> Sean, and, and, should and, I just and, cut and, them and, off? They ain't got stamina, man. Uh, they they don't have stamina. 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 
Yeah, yeah. Got to them. Listen, these guys got to work during the chat back and listen, man. Listen, listen, listen. Hold on one minute. He's got some serious sources he's got to get on in the morning for us, okay? We can't get him That'll to screw it right. up, all right? You understand me? You. He's got some tough horse he's got to get on in the morning for Miss Carol, so we don't want him to screw it up in the morning. There's money to no be problem. made, too, right? So we could dismiss him if class could be okay. dismissed. Okay, okay. Just want to be sure, you know what I mean? Tyler. But listen, go back there, too. I want to go back to the chat beckon, man. Chat beckon a bit there, please. Chat beckon. about the dirt surface uh -huh. where they're different to the synthetic surface, oh, the I dirt, think. Right. Yeah, well, it's, it's a completely different completely different surface different feel yes especially in the cooler weather when it gets cold okay cool well, he didn't get and to then, ride on that he didn't get to race right on that right he got hurt before man. that came on right? was he he might have yeah. he might have ridden the dirt before it changed yeah he didn't get to ride on the synthetic though race right on the synthetic right, right. isn't He's that right? what he hit the ground on i'm pretty sure he hit the ground well, i haven't ridden yeah, on the right. synthetic yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, no, I think that's, okay. I think that's what he got hurt on yeah that's what he got hurt on that's right yeah. that's right yeah Charles Gimlet, thanks sean for your comments jamal thank you too yeah oh this our man here man sean Sean is yes, a, a weekly viewer, boy. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Thank you, probably our and Sean. Loyal one thing I tell you about Sean: viewer. Sean can ride a bicycle better than anyone you see from here to next. He ride it from here to Fort Erie and back. He does. He does. The man can ride a bike far, far, far. Yeah. <laughs> Sean training his bike for a pony now. I see Sean on the pony every day in Fort Erie. Oh, he's down there now. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's at Fort Erie. Okay. Oh yeah. And then okay, the saddle man, pole is about Sean this long, right? Because he's so tall. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sean Giblin, man. Who's Sean Giblin? Oh, that's Sean. Okay. Oh, he's right, man. Yeah, he used to ride. He used to gallop and ride too, right? He yeah. raced right a little bit, right? I think, yeah, I think he galloped up until last year. Yeah, Sean, man. Yes, I yes, he did. Last Sean. year, he got up a little bit last year, too. I remember because he cussed me last year. We, he cussed me stink one morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I just wanted to say, you must have deserved to be cussed because Sean's a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> that's, my, that's what I feel. <laughs> Sean, you believe all the man remembering is Gus' words. No, but yeah, you can't cuss. Me. You don't forget cussing. Stink, right? Yeah, you must have determined it, man. Yes, George is very funny. That's that, that's Emmanuel. I didn't know, know who George was. That's no, we know Emmanuel. No, we know. No, you know. No, you know. No, yeah. you know. No, you know. <laughs> yes, Emmanuel. No, you know. And he's funny. <laughs> these are these are like you all there, right? Eh? These are the comments that were running during the show when yeah, George. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a beast. We tried to just. This is Darren. That's Darren's wife. She used to run yeah, horses at one point too. Yeah. Yes. Sherry, Sherry, Mick, um, who was saying put on his glasses. Oh, large. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was blushing. He was blushing, man. Yeah. <laughs> Things I, are working still. How what about Rocket Ray? Georgie Hosang. The man just said his name, you know. He didn't say hi, he just said Rocket Ray saying Georgie Hosang. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's Rocket Ray, man. That's the man. Though, chef. Rocket Ray. Chef, no, Chef Ray. Yes, Chef Ray. Ray. Sorry, I, I called him a cook. He's a chef. Sorry. Ray was chef, always a chef. He's a, he's he a head was, chef. Was, chef. Ray was always a chef. He only was writing. Oh, yeah. He was a cook, man. He was always a cook, man. He always cook, yeah. Oh, okay. So Tom Maria said here, okay, he was talking about the horse George Dinkle with the horse that my dad bred, and George wanted to not cut with George. What if there was that picture in the Woodbine Larry, racetrack on Larry, the wall Larry, or something? Larry, Can't Larry, one of you guys at uh, Woodbine take a picture? Leroy I don't, or I don't, I don't think there's a. Uh, there's not, not on the wall not, anymore? Not in the not sections that I look at. I've never seen that picture. I've never seen it. Mm. Yes, if it's out there, you know, you know who would probably be able to find it best would be Jennifer Morrison would be able to find it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She would probably be the best idea. one to find it. All right. We get Jen work on it then. So we there's to all are we? Oh my Bajan brothers. Bajan yes, all are we? Brothers. <laughs> brothers, brothers, man. Bajan brothers. Good night, my brother. Adrian. <laughs> Thank you. Who's Adrian now? Adrian. I Oh, that was um. What's his nickname? He works for um. I was just gonna say, he probably have a nickname that no, no, we don't know his real name. 
<laughs> oh, the, the tall fella that works for Mike DePaulo? No, no, he's here with, he's, he's not, no, he's, this is a different guy. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, a painting. Yeah, it's but, a painting. It's a painting. Oh. Okay. Thanks, Tom. Leroy, what do you think about Omar Walker? Who's Omar Walker now? That's your your kid. Yeah, I don't know who's the Omar Walker though. He's not he's not Jamaican Jock. Oh, see oh, this kid knows I, I, this kid knows more than us, man, but these things. Jamaican writer named Omar. Yeah, he's a Jamaican no. writer. Yeah, Sean, you know. gotta find this kid in Barbados, man. Man. <laughs> I feel like you can't better find us. Yeah, right? sure. yeah, no. <laughs> People want now that you would, show, man. you would have to a lot a few more than two hours for Ray if you get him on the show. <laughs> Listen, man. Okay, Ray, give me a shout out if you will come on the show, man. Don't don't leave a brother hanging. People are asking for you. I want to hear about Damascus Dan and those type of horses that used to ride for Pop Tiller. Yes. Ray helped me out when he started. Man. Yes. Yeah. Man, talking about Ray, man. Look, 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 kid. Dad is still up. Oh, no, 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 that's no, an no. earlier one. That one's oh, earlier. Oh, 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 oh. oh that was at nine twenty-one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You oh, sleeping oh, now? Right my now. mother it's watching good. you like his hair up. <laughs> Guarantee. Yeah, he's sleeping right now. And snoring loud, loud, loud. Yes, my man Winston, man. That's Winston. Chris, no, I know who the guy is, Sean. Yeah, man. Chris going to Winston. I think your first win was with Winston, man. You talk about it all the time. You went wide and still went by 10. Oh, oh, Pitai? Yeah, I do. I do everything to get that horse beat, and the horse refuses to lose. <laughs> <laughs> horse is not today. We we lose it today. Yeah. Uh, Peter still, Peter still coming. He's good. Oh, okay. Cause I haven't seen him all year. Oh, That's Rodney great, was great. the same with Peter Severe. Oh, I haven't great, seen great, him. Great, great, great. Yeah. Thanks, guy, man. Thank you, man. Oh. But I'm happy at my little show, and I don't want to keep your guys up any. Yeah. Okay. Any longer. George is a big one. Yeah, no, that, that was a good interview. Yes, yes, it was. It was. Thank you. Thanks, Peter, for saying Well, so here's the thing, you. guys. One of the things we need to talk, Tyler and Chris, give us your ideas and suggestions. We heard they're starting evening racing on Thursday nights, June yes. 6th. Yes. Oh, at so Woodbine. Yes. Yeah, they're starting yeah, Thursday. Night. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's Woodbine. Happen. Thursday yeah. evening. So now yeah. we may have to move our show to Wednesday evening. Sean, yeah. going two nights right? in a row? Yeah. <laughs> two nights. Do, we just yeah, want one night a week. It. And it's not official yet, though. No. It's not official it's not yet. Even work. Oh, okay. It's not official yet, but it's in the works. Yeah, well, work. I mean, but that's be sure to keep us up to date. We got to yeah. know, well, know in advance. You know, years, years ago, it used to be uh, Thursdays was night racing years ago. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Thursday. Used to be Wednesday and Thursday night. So maybe but, no, at Greenwood, Chris. But, yeah. yeah. Used yeah, to be Wednesday and Thursday night. I mean when well, the Wednesday Friday, no, Friday's night races also. Friday's yeah. four. Right? They're gonna do two, oh, yeah. but I think Friday's starting a little later though, T. Four oh. they're gonna go later than ten to five? Later for the way the Thursday and the, they'll take the Friday probably staying where it is. Oh, oh, so like they're gonna go Wednesday, like Wednesday night, right? Like six forty-five. Yeah, 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 Jesus yeah. Just but to the let corporate, Sean the corporate, know. but don't forget that's for the corporate people, right? But yeah, don't yeah, yeah. It's, it just, I, it just means I gotta be up. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> I'm working on a Friday. My pay again, double pay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. That's the first Friday I heard about that. My night off and yeah. my wife. So now I can I get between uh, me and my wife. I'll bring the bad news to the the uh, the Josie Carroll Barn valets tomorrow. <laughs> Did you guys hear we might be going Thursday night? <laughs> Jeez, I, that's it's, probably a, it's probably a better idea to have if they're gonna be running Thursday night. Yeah, yeah, move it to Wednesday. Yeah, no, the three days off in a row is nice. Don't change that. The three days in a row is nice. No, I talking about I'm not talking about the races. I mean the move the show. Oh, yeah, Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. races are running. Yeah. But really, yeah. with the cards, with the cards they're running, they're better off to run at night where there's no other competition. Like, yeah, because you know, yeah. it's yeah. not, it's not the yeah. strongest on a Thursday. <laughs> that, that's a nice way to put it. <laughs> I am. A, I, do, I do. I do bleed with my red, Griff. I do bleed with my red, baby. Press, please. Kerry Depassi said he's going to do a video soon. This is the next correspondent. Thank you, Kerry. I, I, I haven't. 
I thought you abandoned me. I thought you you were down there in Florida just drinking Italian. peanut coladas and, 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 and didn't want to work. I don't know. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys let's let's yeah, wrap this thing see. up now yes yeah, yeah, let's try to wrap this yeah, thing carry up. In florida. He's in florida no not yet not yet not yet we got our your guy leroy telling us to keep it up this show will definitely go places jeez uh, we right. got it now thank you and we thank got you. people from philadelphia checking in Whoa. people from winnipeg oh you got we got people coming in on, and our man Tom Reno has been on for a good hour now, man. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. We appreciate you, man. So Tom Marino said he sent the video or the painting to Darren. So maybe he'll share that with us during the week. Right. Great. So Great. Great, man. Tyler. You Tyler. Yo. Tyler. Your father said he's still Jeez, here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud of you, Pops. I'm proud of you. <laughs> uh, all, all the old people up late, man. <laughs> <laughs> you, can tell, you can tell who's retired now. Huh? You can tell all the retirees. Wait, wait, what's up, what's up? Kerry? Say, what, what, go back to Kerry. Don't run off the short early. No, oh, dear. Oh, early. dear. Early he had, a, he had a different time zone. Yeah, exactly. What time is it in Florida? Florida. <laughs> Brett, Brett, Tom Marino, he misses the action. <laughs> Brett, you, you can't get something set up that they could send it right to the journey show. Like if Tom wanted to send that to the journey show. I mean, he um, send it. all of this is on Facebook and the YouTube channels. <laughs> they post the comments whenever they feel if, at different times. If he had so a when the show is recorded, they Fuck show up. Tom. We gotta give Tom our WhatsApp numbers, man, and, and or or Facebook things where he could send us a messenger and those kind of stuff. So yeah, we, yeah. we'll hook yeah, up well, with Tom that, that man, and, and, and work something out. Well, so and we then can't you would anything. Get, you would probably get little timbits from other people too, to you know, to, uh, just yeah. to give you ideas or, or things yeah, to talk yeah. about or. Right. All right. <laughs> That's what the show's about, man. We just yeah, man. We, we engage him with the public and everybody. Cause we are all listen. We are horsemen. And Talking women. to horsemen. Horse people. <laughs> horse you horse, be horse, horse men people. and horse, horse women. People. I'm very sorry. Thanks for thanks for fixing I, me. I've been through I, the Me Too I, movement. Boys. I know how it works now. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? We, we gotta keep this conversation going among ourselves because I, I got that though from, from Gordy Colburn. You know what I mean? He said he loved this show, you know, horse people talking to horse people and he, he loved that about it and that's what every one of us here we've done it in some way or another working with horses and um people we bring on the show that's what they do we try to bring the best of whoever um who, whoever was, i mean we, we listen we, we bought some two of the best writers that was from that era you know what i mean we had sandy holly Wendy, sandy and, and george yeah Back, yeah you know what i mean they're yeah. two of the best writers in that era that um did it all and is i don't know man i still i don't think i'm gonna sleep tonight man i, I think <laughs> so well you are your own show because i can sleep just now i gotta sleep i gotta sleep tonight listen <laughs> listen one morning no, brett callahan one day he was up at one o'clock and he's sending messages ping 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 you know, yeah one, yeah one, i saw them too sean ping, ping, i saw them too yeah so he's already talking I, now you know, I said, I said, you don't sleep. Uh, I don't sleep much. And then, anyway, I just tuned him out. I got up at my usual time at four o'clock, and he was still up. <laughs> <laughs> he was still up. If I gonna do anything, I do it to the best of my ability. And if Lord. I means running this show good, I running it good. I mean, Lord, there you go. I mean, I'm glad you're on my side, though. I'm glad. <laughs> but Chris, Chris. Yeah. Sean, yeah. I had a conversation two days ago. I was reading up on um what's the music service? Um Spotify and them things to get the yeah. show on. Yeah, yeah. everybody yeah. advising us to keep it below 83 minutes. We've yeah. gone over three hours and 30 minutes. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I know it's Sean Tabby. We can try and keep it shorter and tighter today. <laughs> Yeah, you, you, know, yeah. you know, you know who started our trio of business? That one, Leroy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can start this Leroy started. <laughs> well, right, we can, we can come. 
But your husband's the only body who spoke for four hours and he got cut off as a good thing because he would have he would have gone for like eight hours. He'd still, he still be talking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure, still be going. When his phone dropped, I was like, I think that's a good thing. Cause I know this guy, <laughs> it was almost like 12 o'clock and I know Pastor the man has messaged me all at two o'clock and three o'clock in the morning. Well, yeah. I know he doesn't sleep. So <laughs> As Patrick's phone cut out, Sean said, "We better go. Click. Let me go before you find a charger. <laughs> <laughs> it's turn this off before he finds us." <laughs> and he was angry the next day, man. He was saying, "I had so much more to say." <laughs> <laughs> See what, you know what, what we missed with that was it, what he had to say would have tied everything together, right? Sean, 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 Okay, I've been here now for weeks after straight with no bangs. Roger that. Okay. Roger that. Roger, Roger that. that. Sean, Roger that. Sean and Roy, no after interviewing Jono, our first guest. Yes. After an hour and a half, Sean, Jono get tired. Yes. And we hang up and we finish the show and Sean, Leroy, and I ain't so sure what happened. And all of a sudden, Jono, bing, bing. I got more to talk about. Call me back. <laughs> <laughs> I see John Oye next day. Man, I got so much more to talk about. Why you all gonna keep me on? I'm like, John Oye's an hour and a half. Save it for the next show. <laughs> John Jones was, John Jones started to, to wobble under pressure and we, we put the stick on him and we really wrote him out. And we <laughs> squeezed every ounce of him. And the, the good horse that he is, he, he got a second breath. <laughs> and, and, and one of the, the race is over he's still looking to run off the jock <laughs> best was Jono's first answer so Jono did you always want to ride yep <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, yes. that's the show folks thanks for coming yes. but listen man listen I did an interview with, with Ricky Walker the other day and Ricky Walker was worse than Jono his his yet was so short, it not I it, I almost fell down. <laughs> it, I lost I lost my train of thought. I had to I, I said Ricky, I gotta stop because it was so violent how he he, he cut me off with just a short word, That's and it. I didn't know what to say to him after that. I was kind of like I don't know what to you no. Know, yeah, but my man Sean Miller, don't forget Sean Miller. He's the guy who does all the graphics and that kind of stuff. And Sean said Sean. Try it this way, ask him these questions, and see what happens, Sean. I said, You sure? He said, Yes, just try it, Sean. Try it. I said, All right. And it Sean worked. Man. I got 10 minutes out of him. You know what I mean? But I had, I, it was crazy, though. He, he gave me some short ones, man. I mean, when the first short one, I, I felt like I felt like I got a punch in my gut. You know what I mean? It was like, <laughs> The man said he said it violent, man. A violent, yep. violent. <laughs> <He's just> violent. <laughs> That's a it serious yep, boy, and it's man, violent. No, man. I mean, so <laughs> John wasn't as bad as Ricky Walker was. Ricky Walker was so bad that I couldn't I lost my train of thoughts. Like I didn't know what to do. I I and I don't usually lose those kind of thoughts, but I mean I got it back with my buddy Sean Miller. Or are we gonna get Ricky on for a full 10 minutes shortly in the coming weeks. But yes, look at yeah, what I Tom Marino thinks. We can go national, Sean. Oh, yeah. Leroy, hey, Chris, Tom? Tyler. Yeah, Tom, come on, yeah, we, as long as National? Days, you mean from Christchurch to St. Philip? Christchurch to St. Lucy? I thought you mean all of Fort Erie. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. I, 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 listen, man. I, I, I think... That, that's why I told you guys, right? The more, the merrier. When you got more guys talking, it brings everybody's personality out, and then everybody gets comfortable, and we feel like we're just in the barn talking. And you know, the only thing right, I think we need to do, little, like Emma says, little, and we need to get a Mount Gear Silver yes, in each yes, of our Emma, hands. Listen, I Emma PR. never came to Barbados in her life, but she knows about Mount Gear Silver. Okay? I, <laughs> I, I don't know. Emma ain't easy, you know. Emma is only. Emma ain't easy. Emma. Sean, <laughs> Emma, Sean, Sean Emma don't want, have to come, hey, don't have to come to Barbados. No. I'm going to have to come to Barbados. Barbados went to Emma. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, you want to advertise who's on next? Pardon me? You want, Pardon me? You want to advertise who's on Leroy's next? Leroy's boy wants to know who's on the show next. Um, 
we have a we have you want to go uh, down under and give him the yes, answer we have a, a, a one of the champion jockeys in australia by the name of daring gauchi and um, he he's won 34 great great one stick races and he this guy is being loved by australia he never won the memory cup he came second three times but he won everything else though one of the times he won australian greats and I, I met him when i was 17 years old he was 18 and <clears throat> i had a picture i i i i got lucky because jason jason smith smith which is court um scoby breezy grand grandson who lives in australia still and i asked him if he knows him and i sent jason the picture that we took when we were youngsters you know so I, I sent a message. I said, you know, I, I'm sending you this picture because I, I know you might not remember me because the meeting was brief, but you must remember this picture. I was the only black guy who was riding horses in Australia around this time. So I know it, it would bring back a memory. It was easy to remember. Yeah, and, it, yeah. and it worked. It worked, guys. It worked. We had a chuckle about that. We had a chuckle about that, man. But he's a, he's a great guy, great champion. And you know, he's in charge of the writing school down there now in Australia, in, in Melbourne. This, so, is this is going to be the one time you need a translator for the island people to understand what yeah, you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Good day, mate. You know, this just good day, mate. This is, this is the Dying. one time the major is going to be saying, what did he say? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chris, yeah. you hear the word Sean just used? What? A chuckle. A chuckle? <laughs> a chuckle. Yeah, he's here and chuckle. Yeah, John, yeah. I never yeah. heard that word in years. A chuckle. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm in a groove right now, guys. Are you going to hear? I, I might speak some Spanish on you, man. You know? <laughs> don't say um, nothing too violent. I might go on Latin on your ass, man. You know? You know? <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in a groove right now. Speaking yeah. of future guests, yeah, Sean, guys. I okay. don't know if she's I don't know if she's up and watching, but I'm not letting her off the hook yet. So when it perks, yes, 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 yes. We yes. definitely yes. want you on the show. Yes, 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 yes man. She's got to go to Shout her out. I we saw her at the beach. She's got to come on the show, man. She's got to come on the show. I saw her at the beach. Okay. I want Canadians and everybody to hear her story. Yes. Sonica, but, right. Yes, yes. yes. and we got to play Malik singing Sonia, right? Because she got the song to. name after. You have to. That's how we get to the show. That's how we get to the show. Only, the introduction. Only, only female in the history of Caribbean racing to ever win leading writer titles. Yes, Listen, yeah, that's huge. Listen, on, man. So, the person is so competitive, right? I told Sonia, I saw at the beach, I said, Sonia, um, you know, I really want you to be the first lady on the show, but, um, you know, we got Chantel, and, you know, she did a really good job. She said, but she can't do a better job than me. <laughs> and I will be on. I will let you know. Oh, I will, oh. Like, oh. Chris Griffin was her agent. Yeah. I've, been, well, I've been pressing her to come on, man. Yes, yes. So yeah. we're Leroy, one on more show, comment got, from Marlon Bella. We're calling out Sonic Perkins. Call don't, don't, don't think, don't don't think, don't think we forget. We still, got, we still want you on the show, Sonia. We still want you. You're still no, Sonic this... Perkins. Sonic Perkins. I, I knew so yes, Leroy. Like Wait, Sean, look, Sean, look what this kid just wrote here, man. What's that? Oh, there. That's about the same writer you just spoke about? Yes, sir. The and Australian and job. This you want that as an apprentice, man. This kid is you on the floor, man. I want to do more book. research and give us some tips before the next <laughs> show, because I don't know yeah. about the Darren Gochi guy. I don't well, think this kid is an 11 year old man. He's so Listen, much, he's so young into this game. And so what he's saying there is not Siri nowadays, Leroy. Huh? <laughs> all you gotta do is say Siri. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> My daughter to do it all the time. Siri, okay. do this. <laughs> no, but look at the other days. He's a three-time champion, man. And look, he's right. Yeah. No. When I met when I met Darren Gochi, he was apprentice. In 1983, I went there. We left. Let me see. We would have left India in 83. Chris, that 40 years ago. <laughs> well, I, you notice how quiet I am because I wasn't born yet. <laughs> yeah, quiet. We left India in, on, in January, in the 1st of January, 1984, 1984. And I got hurt. A horse fell on top of me, so I couldn't ride when I got to Australia. And we went to, I think it was Colin, Colin Hayes. 
um, barn to do this you know, meat and that kind of stuff. And I met Darren. And, and one thing I noticed, he was driving a, a red sports car. And he was like, I said, I said, this guy's only Indian. Is he driving that? You know what I mean? And so it tells you, man, this guy was ruling the roof already at that age, you know, 83, 84. I think he came second in the Queen, the um, Melbourne's Cup, I think that year too. You know, so he's done some great things. And I well, just we look to, forward to the next show, Sean. Yeah, because what I'm trying to do, man, I try to, you know, you got to speak to everybody around the world, man. And uh, that's who's done great out. things. We, we well, that's cool, yeah. That's yeah. cool to get a guy from there. That's, that's, yeah, that's you know what I mean? You gotta remember, man. Chris, we got a fixing time zone issue though. Yeah, <laughs> we don't know when the next show will be on. Right now, right now is morning there. It's morning, so we 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 done fix that already. You so. mean it's morning there? It feel like morning here too. <laughs> <laughs> isn't, it, isn't it? Isn't it tomorrow? Isn't it tomorrow night there? They're like a whole day ahead of us, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, it, it, I think it's about hours, hours ahead of us. So. It'll be like one o'clock or something like that. Yeah, so start, well, you better yeah, get it right. You better get the time right, Sean. That when we know what time it is here, time it is there. And I spoke to him. You see how said, seriously Roy just get? You better get that right, Sean. Listen, I got it right. Figure this out, Sean. I got yeah. it right. I told him. I said, You're calling me. I be standing here with nobody to talk to, Sean. No, no. I spoke to him. I said, Listen, we're going to. The show is going to start at seven o'clock, which is like. Um, seven, that'd be nine o'clock her time. We speak for like two hours. You know, if we get two hours out of you, and give or take time. two hours, yeah, yeah, give or take two hours because we, <laughs> we, we gotta respect the time difference now. Yeah. We gotta respect the time difference. And this is the first time we can be doing a show from somebody in Australia. And I mean, we, we are always in contact with Jason Smith. I gotta give big thanks to Jason Smith for talking to him for me, you know. It was brilliant, Chris. Man. We got our research, dude. Working, man. Yeah, man. You got long, long row, long row. We, we have some horses here, Barbados, who's by long row. So, yeah, we we got a long rose gizmo, Lee, right? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so he he rode that horse in the in the coffee guinea. So this kid is right, man. <laughs> it's Sherry, in Australia. Thank you. So Watch we're you. we're we're working on it. You know, we we don't have to get this long we, we can get two hours out of it and we'd be happy for our first australian guests i mean it'd be great All right. well guys we wrapping up the show tonight yes. thanks yes. for coming yes. in Good. everyone please us. like sh share and subscribe to our youtube twitter and facebook pages let us know in your comments who you want to hear from in the future give us an idea where you're calling from when you log on we want to know from all parts of the world who we are reaching. All right. From Journeys, the talk show, host Sean Hall, Leroy Trotman, racing correspondents, Tyler yes. Gaskin and Chris Griffith. And then yeah, I'm Brett Callahan, and we are signing <laughs> off from here. As Sean says, we out. Uh, we out. We out. We out. We out. All right. Yeah. Bye, guys. <laughs>